It is Saturday morning. You know what that means. Welcome to the Comics Pals. We are live. I, of course, am your host, Sean, joined by Tyler. Oh, I was doing a hand rub, but I guess that doesn't work well with audio. Who are you, baby? Uh, I was going. I was going for a Birdman sort of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, baby. True. Yeah. I was thinking the baby, but I'm getting my babies mixed up. I'm also. Kale, what do you baby. think about this? Uh, Birdman, <laughs> like Harvey Birdman. Okay. Yep. Uh, or like close. Michael Keaton. We're gonna test your rapper knowledge throughout this episode. Uh, oh boy. <laughs> we already tested Marco's rapper knowledge, and he failed because he thinks Tupac's still alive, right, Marco? I don't think I know. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Say hi, please, as you guys join us in uh, in the Twitch chat. Always love to interact with you guys. Really excited to do the show today. Lots of stuff to talk about. Hello, Catherine. Uh, Hello, CW Gordon. What is up? Lots of people already coming on board. Thanks for hanging out. Um, Okay, so we're going to be talking about a lot of things today. First of all, uh, we're talking Bad Bunny. We're going to be talking about <laughs> Bad Bunny and uh, him playing a character, a main character in a Sony Spider-Man spinoff movie. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Some C strikes again. Yep. Bad news about Fantastic Four. Uh, announcement about the Batman, the future of that franchise at CinemaCon, which was this past weekend. Frank Miller and Dan Didio are launching a new comics publishing company, if you can believe that. And in our main topic, we're going to be talking about death in comics. Should it matter more? Should death should death matter more in comics? Yes. Nah. Solved. Let's go home. <laughs> All right. We don't need a main topic now. We're good. <laughs> yeah, Let's talk about bad bunnies more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There's only so much. There's only so much bad bunny talk. Um that I can tolerate. So you guys want to want to hear about um, a mishap on my part? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, remember when I bought this? Nope. What What is is this? Uh, Inferno? Inferno? Oh, yeah. Inferno hardcover? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this came in the mail the other day. (laughs) (laughs) I'm holding up another Inferno hardcover. I purchased it off Amazon when it first went on sale and for whatever reason on Amazon they're a lot cheaper when they first first get put up yeah, yeah. Um, and so I bought it and I totally forgot that I did that so my girlfriend says oh your book is is here and I'm like what book I didn't buy any book <laughs> and I was like no <laughs> I did buy it and then Amazon pre-orders dude what's even worse at Oh, oh, even like oh, there it's go. not even like wow. I can, you know, be like, oh, well, at least I have a one of each cover. Uh, so that's pretty neg. But my loss can be your gain because I decided that uh, with the second copy, we will be doing a giveaway. Woo! Oh, shit. There we go. Yeah, I'm just going to buy it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you're not eligible for this giveaway, um, but all the listeners are. We're going to figure out how we're going to handle it because I'm you know guys. yeah mm-hmm. love that all right hold on but, uh, 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 Sean just so better. you know you're, you're, you're breaking up I might need you to drop off and then <laughs> I'm breaking up yeah, yeah real yeah, bad you're, you're, really you're breaking up yeah oh no yeah uh, oh, no. but we're going to be uh, <laughs> uh, uh, giving away this book yeah somehow I think that's, that's what you were saying no yeah You'll be able to get your hands on a copy of the hardcover edition of Inferno at some point. We'll probably make the announcement next week about how we'll do it. But uh, yeah, whoever lights the biggest it. fire. No, I no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. We, yeah, we can't encourage people no. to uh, commit crimes. Arson. Is oh, bad. lighting a fire is not a crime. I was a talking big about fire. Arson. Don't do that. Location, location, location. Mm-hmm. Camping That's grounds. True. Burn books like everyone else is doing. Yeah. yeah. Or photographs. <laughs> okay. You know, Mark them <laughs> like, like everyone else is doing. Wait a second. <laughs> oh, Marco, no. Marco's become a walking Nickelback song. 
Okay, now you're testing my knowledge of uh, early's what rock. Listen, we're uh, we're going into my territory now. Trailer trash. Mm-hmm. What's up, Trap Zord? Welcome to the chat. So yeah, uh, as I said, we're doing the Inferno giveaway at some point real soon. Uh, now, that was the good side of how I wanted to start the show. That was the that was the nice part. Here's the not so nice part. I am pissed. Oh. I'm pissed. Very pissed. I was putting the show together yesterday. Mm-hmm. And you guys know that the way I do it is I scour the internet, various mm-hmm. websites, uh, for news and comics. And that's I what feel like you, I'm going to get in trouble. You're not. <laughs> um, you're just guilty. <laughs> Ther- therapy, Cal. Therapy. You might if you cross me during this conversation because I'm putting the show together and I'm in La La Land, right? And boy, do I go to comicbook.com and see spoilers, big time spoilers, like the stuff we're going to the movie for spoilers. Just in the headline with pictures, dude, they're, they're showing too much of this Doctor Strange movie. They they ruined it. They, they in the past it up. week they were showing way too much. They screwed it up. Shenron, I'm not good. I'm not good because I got Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness spoiled for me by a website, by a a an otherwise reputable comic book website. Really, really sucks. Um, it took the wind out of my sails. Like, look, we're all adults. You know, it's cool. We're all busting our asses trying to make ends meet. You know, trying to satisfy the various masters in our lives. And there's not a lot of joy to be had. Me, <laughs> one of the one of the things that I that I enjoy in life is comic book movies. I really mm-hmm. do. They bring me happiness. That's why it sucks when people crap on them. Because it's not an elitist thing. It's not anything like that. It's just something that I truly enjoy that makes my life easier to live. And then this fucking website. This fucking website. Yeah. Goes and spoils it. You, like, you know what time it is. What are we I doing here? Spoiled. I guess exactly. so. I guess so. Dude, and Sean. I, yeah. Yeah. I typically avoid comicbook.com for that exact reason. It's it's rough. I take the heat round. I have to do it. I This is, this is what I do. I didn't know this was going to happen to me. I felt like I was on fucking Facebook. I got a friend who posts, who he doesn't care about anybody. He just spoils everything. Just spoil, spoil, spoil. It's Open bad. Night. Yeah, Opening get those night. Opening night. out of your life. Oh, dude, that sucks. That's not a friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's You're not up. kidding. You're not kidding. Luckily, I see the that movies per- before him. That person belongs in Guantanamo Bay. You're right. Yep. With Tupac. <laughs> um, yep. So, He's anyway. Escaped. I say all that to say <laughs> that our community, right, whether it be the, ch- the Twitch chat, whether it be the comments section anywhere, Discord, anything like that is spoiler free, right? So we use spoiler tags on Discord. Um, obviously, if you don't, don't be that person. Although we don't have that person in our in our Discord. Yeah, like, everybody's there's really, no, like, yeah. real good Dude, our, real respectful about that stuff. Our Discord, like, I'm in a couple of other Discords. Our Discord's very good about the spoiler tag. Yeah. yeah. Like, they spoiler yeah. tag stuff that I don't even think needs it. And I'm like, but hey, proceed with we caution. Have good I appreciate it. Yeah. We have we have really good people. Um, speaking of which, speaking of which, a lot of really good people have joined our Patreon. Uh, thank you to everybody who has done so um we've been really lucky and uh you know really humbled by the fact that so many of you have joined us over there lots of different tiers for you guys to enjoy patreon.com slash the comics pals uh i wanted to quickly mention marco's muckhole which is not a thing i ever thought i would say in any space you sure i feel like that's a uh, part for the course for me oh, okay <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize you were a doctor, Sean. Mm, I play one on TV. The clinical term of muckhole. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Marco posted his. So we've got a newsletter that we do. It is one one of us each week. Um, and so one 
four months basically. And Marcos was this week, and Marco, you know, did what I expected. It was really good. Um, he actually dove deep into some Warren Ellis words. Um, obviously a controversial figure, but you know, looking past the actions of the man just to get into some of his thoughts and his book that he wrote. Um, and uh, it was really, really intriguing. So um, hats off to you, Marco. I, I, I loved it. Yeah, uh, it's a really interesting book. So yeah, I appreciate that. You know, uh, I got some of those ideas across. Yeah, absolutely. It's wacky. <laughs> it's fucking wacky, dude. Can you can you talk about the concept of the of the book? Yeah, so it's called Do Anything. And it essentially is an exploration of him talking to the robotic head of Jack Kirby, um, where this this head comes from um, a science fiction writer, um, and he just stuffs it with interviews and with anecdotes and with pieces of information about and with Jack Kirby, and then just has a dialogue with him about his ideas about music and comics and architecture, and uh, it gets out there. It's real fucking wacky. Um, the robot consistently insults Warren Ellis and throws smoke, cigar smoke in his face. It's, uh, it's just funny. Um, and pretty informative, I think for 2009, 2008, when it sort of came out. Mm. Um, and yeah, it just sort of goes through his thought process about a lot of the stuff that I care about within comics. And I think it's pretty insightful. It's short, but pretty dense. It's, Mm. it's pretty funny because I believe AI can actually do that now. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, scary typical typical ellis ellis is one of those uh, writers where like the shit he comes up with in the like science stuff that we have now like there's always bits i'm like oh that sounds like a warren ellis thing that's coming to come to life i don't like that like <laughs> um yeah I, I love warren ellis it's working yeah if for for anybody who's interested this is the cover that's the robotic cigar smoking head of jack kirby wild Absolutely wild. Uh, So, yeah, if you want to check that out, that is available on our Patreon. Do want to call out uh, all of the $10 or more patrons. These are the people who have joined the I Shall Become a Pal tier or greater. And uh, last week we gave each one of them their superhero names and origins. So I'm going to run through those once again. Not the origins, just the names. So thank you to Thunderstruck, Rebecca Alejandro, The Night Stalker, Harris Najinsky, Brian Demolisher Del Pozo, Julissa the Jaguar, and Random Rocio, The Courageous Conolatus, Kefis the Incorruptible, who is in the chat, The Great Destroyer, Hyper Viper 89, Momentum, Mike Elliott, Starcross, Catherine Stars, who is also in the chat, Indestructible, Indy Aaron. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate you very much. If you guys at home... Want to join the Pals Verse? You can do that by joining us on Patreon. All of those people, members of the Pals Verse, and we're we're hoping to expand. So hang out with us over there. Um, do, do you think there'll be a, a Pals Verse movie before there'll be a new Spawn movie? It's bound to happen. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Interesting. Before yeah, a Spawn in, movie. Yeah, I don't think that's maybe. happening. The, uh, in the pals verse being part of the metaverse where we exchange mm-hmm. only ideas and nfts okay all right next topic lost Trump. me yeah um <laughs> if you want to catch this show live you can do so by joining us on twitch.tv slash the comics pals every single saturday start your weekends with the comics pals at 10 15 eastern a.m Every single Saturday, Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern for Pals Pulls. We had a great time last week on Pals Pulls. Mm. Um, can't remember a single book we read. Oh, The Swamp Thing, Amazing Swamp Spider-Man. Thing. That was a controversial review. Color me surprised. <laughs> um, it's rare that there's controversy when you're positive. But <laughs> these things do happen. Um, so, yeah, we had a good time over there. YouTube.com slash The Comics Pals. Subscribe for free. Like the video, share it with your friends. If you are not a YouTube viewer, that is perfectly fine. Just head on over there and throw your subscription our way. Costs you nothing, free to do. Helps us out a ton. Doctor Strange, The Oath, book club, available right now if you are listening live. Early access for patrons. Um, 
even if you're listening on the day this drops, still early access, but it drops this Tuesday. Um, we had a really interesting conversation about this one. Uh, Brian K. Vaughn, Marcos Martin. I was surprised in in various ways. I was surprised by what we got out of this, but it made me think about Doctor Strange in a way that I don't often. So I was I was uh, I enjoyed it. I yeah, enjoyed Kale's it. takes on this episode are really interesting. Can't wait mm, till you guys hear those. Yeah, yeah. it's, those it's a different it's a different Kale than I've experienced. So. Yep. Listen, I'm a very, I'm a multifaceted character. Mm, yep. Every now and then, you know, Kale drops the spiciest of well takes um that uh you know just leave us all aghast Mm -hmm. um also join our discord join our discord we have a lot of great people there often the people we interact with here on switch are members of said discord so link to it is in the description join it come hang out with us we always love to have new people chilling with us in our comments Uh there you go. Okay, you cut out there again for a second, Sean. But oh, what is going on? It's so annoying. It must be my you gotta, internet. Did you, did you crank up your modem this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Spectrum is really dragging you down. Did you yeah. add oil? Did you forget to add oil to your modem again? That was what it was. Forgot yeah. to change out the hamsters running in the in the wheel. wheel. Yeah, oil is just too expensive these days, man. Can't afford it. Um. All right. So yeah, let's get into the listener comments. Tyler can't do it, so Kale's gonna <laughs> sub in. This week. That's on cue. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Tyler, did you just swallow something? No, I'm just dying, guys. It's fine. Oh, okay. I thought you were choking on something. No, I just you don't have illness. you don't have a sound file that might fit this situation uh, right now. I don't. I don't choke on anything. Like it's just you I'm know gonna come. wrong sound file. <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong one. It's not the. Not what I was, not what I expected. No, I was gonna, but, uh, uh, <laughs> nope, not that one either. Oh, <laughs> shit. All right, never mind. Sean, get to the comp, the, or, or whoever, Cal. Yeah. Whoever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On episode 287, uh, last week's episode, our comics at risk of going extinct. We had a few comic comments from this one. Uh, the first one is from Anthony Coker. Yeah. Sorry yeah, sure. if that's wrong. Uh, I'm behind on your podcast, so I just glimpsed the recent headline topic. I don't think comics are going the way of the dinosaur. However, I would personally like to see the limited series or the OGN or the season as to capture a fully formed story. Fair. Yeah, I think we talked about the sort of the differences between those formats. I'm definitely a little bit on the side of OGNs and sort of graphic Mm -hmm. albums like Europe. Um, the season concept, actually, I like a lot. Yeah. And, um, the, the stuff that Ron's been doing with the Swamp Thing, I think, is a good way to sort of delineate storylines. And at the same time, as a publisher, you're not risking, like, a really long run or, you know, you don't have to worry about the sales necessarily because, you know, this is just the one season. You'll try it out. If it works, it works. If not, then you can sort of scrap it. But that commitment is better than stopping off at like oh issue six and now we got to swerve because we're ending the book yeah um i mean i i am not as into um ogn's the season thing is feels it feels like a gimmick i don't even know what it is yeah dc hasn't really like clearly defined it some things start out as seasons and then they're not things don't start as seasons. And then they are like human target, for example, never announced as a seasonal thing, just 12 issue mini. Yeah. Now all of a sudden is going into season two. Does that make sense? No. Um, but that's what they're doing. So I, I think that's makes messaging in and of itself, which I think DC yeah. is very guilty of. I, I would like for the OGN to return back to the big two. Like I remember Marvel was doing a couple. I think there's a Rage of Ultron was one of my favorites. Yep. It was Rick yep. Remender and Jerome Pena, uh, which is essentially a Hank Pym story. Ooh, but they're in main stuff. continuity. Very um, good. Uh, they're in main continuity. They kind of tell a story that um, it has, I don't know of a better word, but like um, it means something to the main universe. 
weight. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Weight to it. Um, they, they did another one too with like Warren Ellis. And, Endless wartime. Yeah, it was that um, Warren Ellis and I want to say, I don't want to say I don't know who else it was, but I can't remember the artists. Um, but those were good. I liked those at the time. Yeah, I think that in limited spaces, those can definitely work. DC has had a good thing going or had a good thing going with the Earth One stuff. Um, mm. I really enjoyed the ones that I read anyway and the concept in general. So I agree. I would like to see them do a little bit more of that. Tyler, Mike McCone. And Jason oh, yeah, Keaton. yeah, yeah. Yep. Next. <clears throat> uh, the next comment is on the same episode from Waiting. Love the main topic. I think floppy focus model is and will continue to be only consumed by older diehards. Asking a young person to spend $6 for one 15-minute chapter of entertainment that they'll need to wait a whole month to continue is ultimately a very unsatisfying experience when TikTok, Twitch, YouTube are free and immediately gratifying. Comics can also be an intimidating landscape for new readers to navigate. Which of these five Spider-Man titles should I read if I like No Way Home? What other books are tied into this crossover that I need to get a full story? But who knows? Maybe it just takes one Harry Potter-like hit for all of this to change. Thanks for the discussion. It's a great comment. Um, I am going to save my answer because Dan Trudeau speaks on a similar thing, and so I'll just kind of roll it all into one. Do you want to just... Read that one just so we can tackle it all together. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, Dan says, uh, adding to Wei Ting's comment about Harry Potter, I believe that's the only thing that could turn the ship around for the monthly books. You need a breakout character or series where the comic is the primary medium. The challenge is this isn't something you can engineer or manufacture. J.K. Rowling didn't create Harry Potter as part of a marketing push. I had a similar conversation with the owner of my local comic shop last week shout out to mike's comics in new baltimore michigan what up mike (laughs) he pointed out that as sean noted comics can be just fine as a niche market that's because their potential to create valuable ip justifies the cost if marvel loses five million five million a year on their comics line but generates one story that leads to an 800 million dollar film Plus the licensing, it's more than paid for itself. So there was a very in-depth conversation going on in the YouTube comments this week. This comment really, or this main topic really brought out a lot of opinions. um, And I always appreciate the discussion. Um, If you get a response, it's from me. (laughs) I think they and, can tell. You have a certain voice, Sean, that I think comes through on the YouTube comments. Yeah. I will say. I, uh, I hear it. Um, and, and we lost Sean again. <laughs> I, I don't hear that voice. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, do, uh, can, Sean, do me a favor. Can you just uh, can you leave the Zoom and then rejoin it? Is that cool? Leave the Zoom. Okay. Yeah. And just go. Or, or your host. Are you host, oh, Sean? Uh, yeah, I, I am, I am host. Yeah. host. So yeah, I will so. pass that. Hot potato, make Marco the host. Whoa. And uh, I'll be back in a moment. Yeah. Now lock him out. Oh, oh and now yep, everything yep, broke. Yep. That's Let's fine. Hi, guys. Lock him once. Sorry, so Sean's not coming back. Um, <laughs> maybe all for the better. He's not coming back at all? It's finally time for our time, Marco. We're going to shine, baby. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's coming back. <laughs> oh, damn. Oh, shit, there he is. <laughs> Shh, babe, hold on a second. Okay, uh, are we any better, maybe? Hopefully. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Uh, anybody remember where, I, where we were? Was I saying something? You uh, were. You were, but we couldn't tell what you were uh, saying. <laughs> you were talking about the YouTube comments this week. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes, thank you. Um, and so, yeah, there was a, a very in-the-weeds conversation there uh, that was very good. And ultimately, where I come down on what they are talking about is that while, yes, I do think that a Harry Potter-esque hit can bolster any industry, um, it's not easily achieved by any means. And unlike a Harry Potter, um, comic books are not 
they're not necessarily fertile ground for that in the same way that the book market was. Because even though kids weren't reading books as fervently before Harry Potter, they read books. They had to because of school. So you're exposed to it. You're used to it. Then that hit comes, that book that you really like that sucks you in, um, and that changes the game. Also, I think Harry Potter had appeal to not just kids. Harry Potter also appealed to uh, all ages, um, mm. literally all ages. So I think that that's also a factor. When you're talking about comics, we do know and understand that Dogman, for example, is one of the vanguards of comics when it comes to young adults. However, has there ever been, ever, a hit like Harry Potter in comics? I mean, with respect to the, like, how people react to the book or in terms of like let's say some sort of appeal from uh a like revenue perspective just the 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 overall penetration the dollar amount just the totality of it i mean you factor in mcu films i think that more than makes up for it but but that's not one thing right sure sure yeah yeah yeah. if you're talking like a one-to-one like deathly hollows comes out there's no marvel book that's selling that not even Star Wars one, you know, got that far. Yep. Yeah. Saga is the first thing that probably comes to my mind. But I mean, you know, even Touch that, it, like, yeah. you know, normies were reading Saga and it introduced, you know, a ton of people to image and, and graphic novels and, you know, good comic books. Uh, but I wouldn't say it had the harry potter reach the walking dead maybe maybe later would it count um in the 90s x-men like obviously a lot of that was because of the speculator market but i think also there were genuine sales there and it what eight something million units technically i think i think even if you took the number at face value whatever like whatever the inflated garbage number is if you took that at face value i still think that Harry Potter is more of a juggernaut. Yeah. Oh, for yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't think yeah. you're even you're even able to compare just because yeah. it's a different market overall. It, it is niche, and it's so niche that even if you could find every activated comic book user, you're probably not going to hit the same kind of scale, regardless of the industry, right? Um, that you compare it to. I mean, Marco, I'm looking. I'm just doing a quick search. So it looks like Jim Lee's X Men sold around eight million, while Deathly Hollows, when it first came out in 2007, sold eight point three million. So in terms of, Ooh. it's similar in terms of units, comparable. Um, but it, I don't think it's comparable in terms of uh, cost and all that for sure. I mean, it's, like even uh, and even beyond that, what was you know the longevity of issue two, right? Like there's probably a huge drop off from there and the continuation yeah, of the, the series. Speculator market, yeah. You know, like, so I think, um, I I don't think they're even directly comparable in that sense. Maybe the issue to the book, sure. But I think as a whole package, you're not going to get the same size. You're not going to get the same revenue coming out of it. But it's also just different sized markets. And then, you know, what's funny too? X-Men number one comes out, sells 8 million or whatever they say. Comics industry crashes into the wall (laughs) a few years later. Harry Potter number one comes out, sells however many millions reinvigorates basically creates the young uh uh the you know the ya market and we have what we have now in that space because of that book so it's just not even a there's there's just no tangible comparison in comics and i don't think that there could be because of the differences and how niche it is so i think for comics to thrive um the uh, the expectations have to be you know adjusted if you will yeah don't talk to I was going to say, don't talk to WB Discovery about the uh, success of Harry Potter right now, though. It's uh, mm. a... Right yeah, that died. Yeah, that new movie it flopped hard. I wonder why. Uh, I wonder why. Uh, I wonder why. Marco? Uh, I don't wonder why. Oh, <laughs> shit. Damn it. Fair enough. All right. This last comment comes from this week's Pals Pulls from uh, John Carlos. Ooh. Sorry, uh, I had updated the the. Uh, I, I removed that comment and put another one. Sorry. Oh, um, I don't have the other. One. It's okay. I have, I'll, I'll I have just. It. Okay, go ahead. So this one comes from Aaron Dries. 
I consider myself a young current reader of comics. I began around 2016, 15 to 16 years old, with Amazing Spider-Man Volume 4. Fell off, then came back around 2019 with Hox Pox, Venom, and Amazing Spider-Man Volume 5. None of them with MCU or movie interest. I have a question. You get a writer to work on a character that you wanted to see, but the artist might, may not usually work in the art style that you would want. Which book would it be? So before we tackle the question... Um, I did want to respond to the first part because that's in reference to what we were kind of discussing about how difficult it is to jump into comics as a as a new reader. Um, so Aaron says that they started reading comics when they were 15 to 16 years old, uh, which was, you know, six years ago now. Um, that's pretty cool. I'm glad you decided to take the plunge. Uh, it's also interesting that that wasn't in any way related to the MCU. That's, I would love to know more about that. Like, how did you find out about comics? Why did you start buying them? Uh, all that jazz. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for that, uh, that context. Um, much appreciated to answer the question. Uh, so this, so the, the idea of the question is you can pick a writer who fits a title, fits a character, but then you have to pick an artist who doesn't really fit the fit the the style that you would typically associate with the writer and the character. Their example was Jonathan Hickman and Jen Bartel on Venom, for you know, to give you an idea. Oh, oh. interesting. That's wild. Hmm. Huh. A Venom book. I don't know how to pick a writer on this. I think the. The part that jumps out to me, it's funny because he, this comment comes in right after I saw on Twitter that uh, Alex Ross posted a, a, a cover for Mighty Mouse that he did. And I'm like, oh, that's not something yeah. I would picture Alex Ross doing. That's fun. Ah, jeez. Uh, for whatever reason, the first writer comes to mind is Tom King. I think he is penchant for taking weird characters. Um, for me, it would probably be... Like Detective Chimp, him on a Detective Chimp story, uh, and as an artist, somebody that's weird. No, it'd have to be somebody that's not weird. Well, the art would be weird. The art would like you, not you could fit. Big JRJR doing another another ape. Yeah, yeah. no, that's yeah. so what that would be. Uh, no yeah. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, what's his face? Tyler Crook. I like him as an artist, but I don't think if he fits a a, a Detective Chimp story. I, I would totally think that's read that. it. I think you're talking if I'm understanding the question, you have to lean more house style because De uh, Detective Chimp is already a weird character. Yeah. So you've got to pick someone like Ivan I mean, Reese. Jr. Jr. is a good example. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Junior Jr. on Detective Chimp. Ivan Reese. That's that's a good, a decent. That's answer, fun. Yeah. yeah, that that's good. Yeah. I would. I don't know who I'd want to write it, but I want to see. I'm gonna say Gabriel Hardman on a Muppets book. <laughs> That's what I would like. It's like a photorealistic Muppets book. Oh, incredible. That's so odd. I dig it. I feel like what we're what we're describing is the entire DC Hanna Barbera line that came out. <laughs> Yo, that line was really good. It, I totally under 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 uh not talked about enough it's it's a really fun line underrated underappreciated that's the word that's the word my brain's full of soup right now so yo you got one kieran gillen on swamp thing Ooh. Uh, okay. with oh this might be too much of a poll scott collins on art okay Oh, a traditional DC kind of house artist doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Kef is just saying Howard Porter on Swamp Thing, which I do like as well. Artist? He's in, He worked with uh, Williamson for a while, right, on Flash? I believe so, yeah. This is tough because I, like, the answer I want to give I it's just like it's just a good book like it's not, it's not weird. <laughs> well, I think all of these are are good books. Well, yeah, yeah, it's just not weird. Um, okay, so you you guys 
Yep. There you go again, Sean. <laughs> What's up? You garbled? Oh, my God. What is the deal? There we uh, go. You're good. He drinks it again. All right. Okay. So all right, you're good again. Yeah. You tell me if this follows. It's uh, oh, there you go. The internet connection is unstable. So now we know. <laughs> um, I could have told you that Zoom. Thank you, uh, <laughs> Jonathan Hickman. Typical Sean. Absolutely on brand. Nicholas Draper Ivy. Okay. All right, now here's where I'm I'm probably going to lose you, but this is what I want. I want those two on a Mega Man comic book. Oh, interesting. Huh. I think I think Ivy would I think he, sl- works. he would slay a Mega Man comic. I think the I weird know. part of that is the Hickman part. That yeah. I know, I know. I want to see how Hickman. I want to see how Hickman Hickman tackles uh, in-game resurrection, respawning. (laughs) To come up with a a in-universe explanation for that, is there one? I mean, I don't. I don't know Mega Man lore. I don't. You're probably more well versed. He just he just gets repaired. Oh yeah, that's true. It's a real bit. It would have to be somebody so anti, sort of video gamey anime style. Neil Adams. We'll talk about him later. <laughs> yeah, maybe not now, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think that that's unfortunately not going to be happening. Uh, all right, let me think of a- oh, or or not, Sean. You could think of something else. Uh, do you, should I run into the the next thing while you're you're I frozen? Think so. I think we're gonna just run run into it. Um, let's do a little bit Bitch. of a game. There you go, again, Sean. You're back. Um, Clay, man. Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> every time every time I hear that name, I want to do that because of the long box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear Clayman. I just think of it's always sunny. I can't help it. Uh, Clayman uh, on what? Mega, Mega Man. Man. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It'd Does he cool draw Mega Man hell. with a turtleneck? Fuck yeah. <laughs> a little wonky there. Yeah. Um, should, should we get into the next thing? Uh, yeah, let's do it. You? Let's do it. Tyler okay. got a game. New game. All right, so bear with me on this one, guys. The, the game is called... I can't wait. Ten Questions. Questions okay. of ten? X of X questions, ten of questions. I, I, I don't know. I don't even know what the title is. X of questions. Knights of kind, questions. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is. They threw the X on here. I don't know how, how that works. Um, <laughs> but the way this works is I'm... Going to have you pick a number from 1 to 10. 1 to X. Um, okay. And, I to X. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm not I'm not Greek. Maybe Marco can ask his Greek, Greek friends about that. But uh, is that Roman numerals? <laughs> I don't know the difference. Um, but uh, the way it works is you pick a number 1 to 10. Then I, I will pick a specific predetermined comic book character that assigns that number. You have... 10 questions to figure out who that mm. character is. Oh, uh, okay. whoever can figure right. it out first or within the shortest amount of questions wins. Um, it, oh, I'm going okay, off right. of the Wikipedia article for this. So just keep that in mind for, for each character. Um, and also say on question three, you, 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 you answered, I answered three questions that are yes or no questions, by the way, these are only mm. yes or no questions. Um, and you want to make a guess on the fourth question. That guess will then count as the fourth question. If that makes sense. Okay. So if you get it wrong, then you're at your fifth question. Okay. When are you out? You're out if you just can't get it after 10. Yeah. And how, can someone steal your points? Um, no, no, you're just wrong. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. You're just wrong. Is, is, it, is it all X-Men related or just general? No. They're all just general comic book related stuff from all over. Um, all right, let's do it. All right, who wants to go first? I'll do it. All right, Marco, pick a number between mm, one and ten. Seven. Seven. Okay, let me see who seven Lucky is. Number seven. Okay. All right. Um, big two. Yes. Okay. DC. No. Okay. Um, 
part of the Fantastic Four? No. I mean, that's three. It's a weird question. You, you limit yourself to like 12 characters. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> part of the X-Men? No. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Are they street level? No. Damn, okay. That's actually better. Spacefaring. Yes. Well, I guess I could figure that out with the not street level, right? Mm. Wasted question. I feel well, like there's a middle ground question. there. I wouldn't consider Captain America street level, but. Fair enough. Yeah. Global. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Are they. Let's see. Part of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Have they ever been a part of the Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy? Or are you asking, are they currently part of Guardians of the Galaxy? See, I wouldn't know either, so I don't <laughs> shoot myself in the foot there anyway. You pick, know what? pick one. Have they ever been? Yes. Okay, that is seven questions? You're at your seventh question, yeah. So you're, you're on your eighth coming up. Hmm. Okay, okay, Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, male? Michael's head's going to explode. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I just, I'm on my ninth. And I will say, at your tenth, you can you can take a guess at your tenth. Like if after you ask ten, if you want to make one last guess, you can do that. Are they a parent? Oh, that's a weird question. I don't know how that's going to help you. Is that is that helpful? Um, I'm going to have to look that up. Would it help you to know that Ronan is a father? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't think Rocket Raccoon adopted. I'm going to I'm going to say really. no. I'm going to say no. See, so it's not the only person that was potentially part of the Guardians of the Galaxy that I know. Corsair. <laughs> Corsair, I think, was... Eh, he might have been a one-time member at, at some point. Uh, Clearly right, not the answer. It's, it's my tenth, right? Uh, uh, it's your ninth, I believe. The parent? Okay, okay, okay. All right. I don't on, know. The parent one might have thrown me off. I might have lost track of it. They are uh, humanoid. Yes. And by that I mean like like alien versus like a human. Oh, what's Character. your question? What's, uh, what's the are question? they are they human? Are they human? No. All right. Uh fuck it. So this Congrats. is your last question. So I you're saying you're tenth, saying right? I have the guess, right? Yeah, you have to make your guess now, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say Drax. Incorrect. The answer yeah. is Beta Ray Bill. Yo. What? Okay. Ow. Wow. Damn, how would I kind of there? That's uh, tough. I'm, I'm starting That's... to think it might be 20 questions, but then I lose my whole bit. <laughs> this is a brutal game. <laughs> yeah. Uh I'll I'll go next. Okay. All right. Uh number between one and ten. You can't pick seven. Five. Five. Okay. Interesting. All right. Are they a Marvel or are they a DC? It's a yes or no question. Yes or so no. Right, right, right. To... Uh, are they from the big two? Yes. Okay. Um, are they a superhero? Mm, can you elaborate? Are you asking, uh, is there, or is there on a black and white scale, are they considered a hero or a villain? Yeah, traditionally, asking? are they a hero or a villain? Traditionally, are they a hero? Is your question? Yes. Yeah. Traditionally, no. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. Um, are they from DC? No. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, rule question. Sure. Once you guess, you're that's it, right? Uh, no, but that takes away. Like, if you're guessing at five, that takes away a question. Got you. Okay. Because if you, if you guessed it, then you got yours in five. So that means Kale can potentially has to do that sooner. Okay. Got See you. what I mean? Okay. Um. Okay. Are they an antagonist of the Avengers? No. Okay. 
Are they an antagonist of the X-Men? Yes. Okay. What was that, please? Which uh, number? Uh, you're at five. So the okay, next so one will be six. Okay. Uh, have they appeared in an X-Men film? Yes. It's a good, okay. it's a good question. I like, I like the thinking there. Thanks. Mm. I'm going to guess. Mm-hmm. I'm going to guess Magneto. No. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, interesting. That le- that doesn't leave too many uh, options. Um, have they? So if they, well, yeah. Have they appeared on Krakoa? On the island of Krakoa. I'm going to say, let me just look this up. So you're at your, this would be your eighth question. Um, hmm. No. Are they a Krakoan national? They have no. not appeared on Krakoa. That's very interesting. But oh. they've been in a movie. Wow. Huh. Hmm. This is so interesting. Um, I think I have a guess. Okay. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to guess. Sure. The Sentinel. No. Okay. My hand dexterity is shit. (laughs) (laughs) And so now I'm going into my ninth guess. You, You can have one. You have... This is your, this would be your tenth actually. This would be your tenth question. But after this question, you can. Got you, got you. Guess um. Again. All right. So I'm going to. Okay. Has there ever been? Okay. An X Men event, in which they were the primary antagonist. Oof. I want to say. Hmm. Let me see. Hold on. Event, wow. you're saying, right? Event, yeah. Wow, this is interesting. It, it's so weird because they've been in a movie. No. But they're not. Wow. They've been in a movie, but they're not on Krakoa. Yeah, so this is your guess now. Sure, yeah. Interesting. Wow. Um, all right, just give me a couple seconds. I'm going to try to. Um, and they've not. You said they've not been in um, like the main antagonist of event. They have not been the main antagonist of an event. I'm going to guess Boulevard Trask. No. Okay. The answer is... Juggernaut. Center juggernaut. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would have gotten it. Yeah. Juggernaut. Okay. Juggernaut. Wait, but I, I thought... Ahead. I thought... No. Okay, yeah. I thought... He's, no, I know he's not a mutant, but I thought he had been on Krakoa, but... Yeah, there was like yeah. apparently a one shot that came out, but he was never on Krakoa. It was like reestablishing yeah. him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I was like, oh, he's in two movies. All right, Kale, pick a number. Three. Three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't, don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I get sound. Uh, is it a Marvel? No. Okay. Are they a hero? No. Are they uh, Justice League? No. Oh, yeah, because they're not a hero. Idiot. Fool. Waste your fucking yeah, question. I mean, Black Adam, <laughs> you know? like. <laughs> Are they a cosmic level entity? No. Hmm. Are they a street level entity? Um, no. Are they rich? No. Is it the Joker? No. Whoa. Think about your questions so far. 
Don't tell me what to think about. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. Oh, way too fast. I don't even remember my question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I know it's, a, I know it's a DC villain. They're not rich. They're not cosmic. They're not, not street, street level. level. <laughs> They're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Nobody. So what was your first question? Again, do you remember? Who was it? Uh, if it was a Marvel. Oh, okay. Yep. So not I'm, not I'm yep. I mean the answer, the answer was no. Sorry, I I, didn't, I right, was yeah. trying to remember the first question. <sighs> Have they been in the rebirth era? No. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Okay. 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 Some deeper pull. That was a good question, Cal. I'm just not sure how much easier that makes it because of how many characters there are. But two more questions. I feel like we got to fill out some of this audio here. <laughs> yeah, He's... yeah, absolutely. Are they a? It's getting deep. Are they a bad guy to teenagers? <laughs> um, meaning, meaning like the Teen Titans. Is like is teenagers. are you asking? Is their primary? Are they the primary antagonist of teenage heroes? Is that yeah a fair question? No. Yeah. So no, <clears throat> no on that one. Yeah. 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 So one, more one more question, and then your guess. Or, or, or you, guess. if you can get, I mean, at this point, nobody got anything right, so you can ask your question <laughs> and then guess. This is a tough game. It is. I think maybe 20 questions might be better, but I don't know how, that, how well that works. That's uh, too many. That's yeah, it's too many. Maybe if I limit it at the get, that might help. Damn. Are they a Batman villain? No. <sighs> Wow. Uh, is it Gentleman Ghost? Nope. Nope. What if I so just got it? <laughs> here's, uh, I don't think you're going to get it. Here's where you went wrong. Your first question was, is it a Marvel? Uh, I said no. Then you presumed it was DC. 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 Oh. I knew that was going to happen to me. It was, in I fact, knew that the was Violator to me. Oh! <laughs> from Spawn or the Clown. I knew yeah. that was going to happen to me. Wow! So I think you were you were lost. I was trying. I was trying to like guide you without really saying it. But yeah, caught Kale with the spawn that. swerve. Get Marco. Violated. If you had picked and Marco, if you had picked six instead of seven, it would have been Swamp Thing. Oh, why? Why are you gonna spoil it like that? That's funny. Because I'm not putting that back in there if we ever do this again. Oh well, there you go. What were the others then? Um, the others were I had Nightcrawler on there. I had uh, Rick Grimes on there. Okay. Uh, Two Face. Uh, who else did I have? Uh, John Constantine. Ooh. Uh, Dark Side, and another option would have been Kang the Conqueror. Wow, uh, lots so, of not, nothing too. Uh, I guess maybe the Violator would have been the hardest one. Oh, not really. Yeah. Once you realize it's not Marvel DC, well, you could have met, you could, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you could have metagamed it to know I would have picked a Spawn character. <laughs> I think it, it's a fun game. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to evaluate it. Let us know what you guys think. Did you have fun? Did anyone did anyone in the chat get close. come close to getting Marco any of those got right? Yours, Sean. Yeah, I, I was ready for that. Did one. get yours? He did say Juggernaut before I said it, so I was kind of I was like, oh, okay. That's fair. That is yeah. fair. But uh, it wasn't his round, Toad. so you, you get nothing, Marco. Toad's yeah. close. Right. close. Well, Toad is. is he, I mean, spoiler. But Toad is in Krakoa, literally. Yeah, I was he's in say, Krakoa. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's 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 knee deep in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Give us your feedback on the game. We always love trying stuff out. We love to hear your thoughts on it. Also, uh, good job, Tyler. Um, I forgot to show off that I'm wearing. I'm sporting 
It oh comes shit! Out here. Yeah, let me take my headphones off real quick so you guys. Can yeah, see. take it off. Merch swag. I've got take it off. The Comics pals t-shirt, the long sleeve. See, how's it feel? What's the quality? Very Good. nice. It doesn't have yeah. headphones on. Uh, it is oh, in yeah. blue. <laughs> It is in blue, but I think we have all colors, right? Or not all colors, but like oh, we've we got have, white. Yeah, we have got, yeah. yeah. We got all, go yeah. check that out. We've got how a link to the merch uh, store. How does it feel? You What's know the what? Quality like I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that it feels better than the shirt that you and Catherine bought. <laughs> well, <laughs> the Robert Pattinson. That's barely that a limb. You to walk out on a diving board. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice. It feels it feels nice. It feels comfy. I feel, feel comfy. Yeah. It's comfortable. Yeah, exactly. So uh, if you guys want that, we do have a merch store. You can check it out if you would like to. Marco, put that link in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, I did want to shout out. Uh, I, I recently realized that I can actually see uh, who's watching us live. So I'm shouting <laughs> out people who I haven't mentioned. Uh, Commander Root and Lara Croft. That's funny. Uh, hello, Whoa. welcome. Thank uh, you for joining us. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Let's get into the news. Um, and unfortunately, we do have to start the news segment with, in a way that you know we never, ever want to have to, uh, which is to say that we lost another great. Um, we lost another Titan. I feel like it happens way too often these days. But, um, you know, legendary... Comics artist uh, Neil Adams has passed. Um, you know, Neil Adams is responsible for, I mean, Batman. Like, so much Batman. Um, you have your Green Lantern, uh, Green Arrow, uh, the, Ghul. yeah, Rachel Ghoul, the, uh, the Muhammad Ali Superman. Mm. I have that. Wait, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. rad. Um, and I, you know, I've seen that cover many times and it was always like, wow, cool. But, you know, in light of the announcement, I, I you know, someone had shared it and I looked at it and I couldn't believe how good it was. Um, like, yeah. it just struck me like, whoa, this is really good. Um, and I, I, don't, I know I probably noticed this for the first time the other day, but I noticed that Batman is sitting in the audience watching the fight in his in his cape and cow. All you can see are his ears. And I thought that was a nice touch. Um so, yeah, Neil is one of the most important artists uh, of all time in comics. Um, really, really helped to change the way that we think about Batman. Um, taking, being one of the artists to take him away from the more like campy stuff and into the darker sort of um, portrayal that would come to dominate the 80s and 90s and every decade since. Um, he was 80 years old and leaves behind a, a legacy that very, very few creators in any uh, medium can touch. Not many creators have been able to have the kind of impact that he had uh, to shape public perception the way he did and to leave so many people um, with an impression. When you look at the response that the community, the comics community has had to the death of Neil Adams, um, it's really remarkable. And we see this every single time. Um, and it goes to show you just how important these figures are to comics. Um, Gail Simone, she said, I just heard that Neil Adams passed away. Legend hardly seems to cover the man's talents and achievements. So many of the Keystone comics in my life were his. My favorite were his Tarzan paperback covers. Hmm. Wow. Deep what? Hole. Yeah. Um, Jock, Rip, Neil Adams, the absolute best. C.B. Sabulski, comics would not be the same without the influence of Neil Adams. Devastated, we lost the legend. My deepest sympathies for his family, friends, and fans. He will truly be missed. What I always try to think about when we do these is the fact that the person we're talking about left behind a legacy that will live beyond. 
and they accomplish things in life. How many people accomplish things that will exist past them besides their, their children and their family and all of those things? How many people leave an impression on the earth that will live on past them? We will still have Neil Adams comics available to us in presumably 100 years. His influence will still be felt at that point. That's remarkable. What more can you ask for as a human being? I don't think you get much more as a human being. So thank you, Neil Adams, for every single thing that you did, for helping shape the industry that we all love. And I hope that in the end of your life, you were able to recognize all the amazing things that you did and all the fans and all the love and support, um, you know, from from the world over. Thank you. Um, I will say one of the things like Neil Adams is a linchpin to the comics industry. Um, mm-hmm. Created some of the most important characters, you know, like Ra's al Ghul, Talia al Ghul. Um, he created Sauron for uh, X-Men. He's the creator of that. Um, your favorite X-Men villain, Marco. Um, but he also did some stuff that isn't about creating or, or his art. Um, he was one of the kind of the people that spearheaded workers' rights in comics. Mm-hmm. Um, he, yeah. I think during Marvel, uh, there was a, a new contract going around at the time when he was there. They pretty much told people, sign this and you sign off the rights for your creations. Um, mm. He then went to everyone at the office and said, do not sign this. You are signing your life away. Um, mm. They didn't work out for him in the long run. It wound up passing, but he was there for that. He was the artist that uh, pushed for artists getting back their art um, after it was produced, which oh. then gave artists a second form of income. Um, previously, mm. Marvel would keep all the art, and they would just toss that shit after a while. What? Wow. Um, yeah. they, or oh, shred yeah. it. Yeah. It, it was just used for the printing, and that's it. Um, Holy shit. And then uh, I believe, uh, Kale, help me out on this, Creators of, of Superman... Um, Siegel and Schuster. Yeah. Um, he pushed for them to be recognized for that. Um, they weren't given credit early on for that. And he was one of the people that really pushed for it in alternative media besides comics. Um, I believe it's. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. But like uh, he was. He helped artists even outside of his work. Like he was just yeah. a total maverick for making sure the creators got what was owed to them. And I think that's honestly probably one of them was more lasting effects outside of the art. So something that continues to just be built on. Um, and I think we, we continually talk about how it's needed in the industry. So for the fact that he helped spearhead a lot of the conversation, um, that's going to exist as well beyond, you know, his legacy here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for everything, Neil <laughs> Adams. Now, I do I do have to, now that we have had the serious discussion about this, I do want to point out that the way that I found out about this was from <laughs> the actual Neil Adams Twitter account retweeting a Hollywood Reporter article about the death of Neil Adams. Fucking freaky. How else were you going to find out? They had to let, you know, Neil Adams had to let people know. Yeah. <laughs> hey. He had himself. Hey, hey, guys, has, the queen, you know. has the queen been tweeting at all? I think it's the same situation. <laughs> Unreal. I, I did. Uh, I did. Um, after this, I did see an article that came out where uh, I guess in one, of the, in one of the conversations Neil Adams had with uh, Frank Miller uh, back in 2007. So think about yeah. what Frank Miller was creating at this point. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He called uh, Frank Miller a white trash for what he was making. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. Uh, so he he was very honest um, with his stuff, which I appreciate. And with those kinds of opinions uh, and also actions, a man ahead of his time. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, the man the man we needed at the time. Right. Certainly. Yep. Exactly. Let's talk about DC films. Uh, so I know, right? CinemaCon was this past weekend, and they showed off, you know, a whole bunch of movies coming out of the DCFU. Uh, yeah, they showed off a little bit of The Flash, uh, Black Adam. They showed off the logo for Blue Beetle. Um, not really 
anything too worth talking about. Um, the most interesting thing, as far as like those movies go, the ones that are that are currently being filmed or are completed, was that when they showed the flash footage, they pretty much only showed Michael Keaton's bat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, as as it relates to like the heroes, they showed a lot of him. He actually says the the well. I don't know. Maybe people don't want to be spoiled for this, but um, yeah. What ah, did you whatever. just talk about at the beginning of this episode? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is whatever. It's fine. Uh, so they showed a lot of stuff uh, for that, but very very little actual flash. I wonder why. I can't imagine. Yeah, maybe yeah. Ezra Miller. Maybe their their crimes, their recent crime wave, has uh, altered the way that DC's promoting this movie. Their crime did, wave. Did they show off any of uh, Mara's scenes from Aquaman? Uh, Great question. That man. I don't know. Oh, that I don't. Very know. quiet on that. Honestly, I'm curious to see how, the, how that how that turns out. Two million subscribers or subscribers. Uh, two million petitioners uh not that those kinds of petitions matter but you know one of those like internet petitions two million to get her off the movie like that's gonna happen the movie oh joe biden has to look at those (laughs) yeah (laughs) them's the rules yeah it's law um so not a lot to go off of here dc obviously in flux uh, with the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. So lots of things are up in the air right now. Worth pointing out that this week it was announced that uh, Batwoman is canceled, and so is Legends of Tomorrow, both canceled Ooh, over at the CW. Oh, did Legends get command- yeah. uh, canceled as well? Oh, okay. Yeah, finally. They've been skating on ice for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Their budget got so bad, they sent them to the past where nobody had costumes anymore. <laughs> yep. Oh, my God. I'm fucking yeah. working on Star Trek money there. Yeah. <laughs> But like Enterprise Star Trek. Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. A show called Legends of Tomorrow. (laughs) Legends of Tomorrow and Everyone's in the Past. Wow. Pretty bad. Um but it's it's wild that uh amongst all this turmoil for DC or for Warner and Discover uh Discovery, now they're also dealing with the Amber Heard situation and that shit, plus the Ezra Miller stuff. Like is there a like something has to come out about like Zachary Levi at this point? Like they're just part for the course for some sort of weird ass shit to come out about somebody. Helen Mirren is going to have something happen to her. Uh, that's going to cause uproar, and they're going to have to edit her out of Shazam too. Oh, another movie that would be well, incredible. This is what happens when you merge families; you inherit problems. Everybody's got that you know that uncle that no one really wants to hang out around. Everybody's, you know, everybody's got that brother who steals. Like we've, there's always, so there's always the some going. problem. Always some problem. At least um, Super Pets is coming out. Looks good. Yeah. yeah. At least yeah. there's that. So Toby Emmerich took the stage at CinemaCon to announce the Batman Two. Big shock. New okay. Batman Two Flash. <laughs> uh. We don't know what it's going to be. We don't know what it's going to be called. We don't know if the Batman Two is the name. Nothing like that. Obviously, things are not nearly that uh, developed. But um, he did have this to say. Matt Matt Reeves took one of our most iconic and beloved superheroes and delivered a fresh vision that clearly resonated with audiences. And with your incredible support, shattered box office records around the world, which is one of the reasons I'm excited to break the news that Matt, Rob Pattinson, and the whole team will be taking audiences back to Gotham with the Batman 2. I feel weird saying Rob Pattinson. I don't know why. It just just felt odd. Um, This is a no-brainer. It's exciting to know that it's happening. I'm into that. Um, But... Given this the this announcement and how exciting it is, I thought we could share some footage of what the Batman two might actually look like. We might have this is, a little this bit was shown at CinemaCon, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they did have a little reel that they wanted to show off, so thought it'd be fun to share that with you guys now. So if you're watching here, on yeah. Twitch or YouTube, it is up for you guys. This is legit. Let me know if you guys can hear. Bomb. Oh, tremendous. I swear by heaven, I'll kill you. 
kill you all. Wow, that guy looks so familiar. Is that all adds up to a sister? Adam West? Hello? Batman speaking. Hello? No way! What kind <laughs> of creature would gobble up a bird in a tree? <laughs> the penguin. <laughs> Adam West How delivery is so good. Dance anymore. It's unbelievable. So good, you graces with your presence. <laughs> I love that it's still Zoe Kravitz. Like everyone else is deep fake, but it's still Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> they couldn't throw her with the kit in there. Come on. No. <laughs> Yo, the sh those Batmobile shots though. <laughs> Tremendous. Whoa. Looks great. Incredible, phenomenal. Wait, that's wait for it. the movie we deserve. That's the that's the Adam West cut. Adam West. <laughs> good Man, stuff. That was really good, like deep fake stuff too. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that's by uh, Corridor Crew. Uh, spoiler: It's not actually footage. Um, what? Corridor Crew. They do a lot of deep fake stuff. I believe they helped uh, with the Luke Skywalker in Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett. Oh wow. Um, spoiler if you haven't watched that. Yeah, he shows up in that. Nice. Um, uh, also, side note, the Luke Skywalker in Book of Boba Fett is not actually recorded by uh, Mark Hamill. They used AI for that as well. Um, horrifying stuff. We are in a new world. In indeed. The um, in fact, I'm planning, um, I'm planning soon to reunite with Tupac. Um, mm. It might it might have to be through technology, but uh, Marco, you if you want him. if you want me to hook you up, you know I have some pull. I mean, mm. if you tell me where he's living, I'll go. I'll go visit Amelia Earhart. Go see uh, whoever else is there. Like I'm there, Whitney Houston, maybe. Is there an island where dead musicians go? They're not dead, bro. That's oh, what I'm right, saying. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. It's like a, like an Epstein's Island for for. Oh Indiana, my God! So. Okay. okay. <laughs> Next. Instead of that, instead of that awfulness, let's talk about the Sony universe of Marvel characters. Oh, AKA, more yeah, Let's go back to Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> AKA the Some C. Oh. Um. <laughs> announcement from Ew. the Some C this week that shook the world to the core. It was all. It was the collective shrug of the whole world. <laughs> you underestimate things, Cal. But well, let let let's let's say this. So, uh, Benito Antonio Martinez Ocasio is who, Cal? I think one of my cousins. <laughs> but definitely one of my cousins. <laughs> yeah, definitely one of yours, Marco. <laughs> Kale? Any guesses? Yeah, no, I don't know. All right, come on, Bad Bunny. Kale, do you know who Bad Bunny is? No. You know, if Benito? You, no? Nothing? If you, if you had just said that name to me, I would assume that was the name of the, the bunny lady in the Spider-Man comic this week. Well, that's White <laughs> Rabbit. <It's a> <laughs> that's Rabbit. She is a bad bunny. Hey. Like, am I wrong? <laughs> Not yes, but no. <laughs> well, listen. That's my life. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Bad Bunny was announced at CinemaCon 22 to be headlining the film Headline. El oh, Muerto. Yeah. If you don't know who El Muerto is, join the club. No one knows <laughs> who he is. Why? Because El Muerto has had, I think I read two comics yeah. appearances. Two appearances. Um, yep. Two appearances debuted in 2006. In Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six, so a very random uh, comic book. Uh, he's a super-powered wrestler who fought Spider-Man. And then they wow. team up later to face off against Dorado. And so they're going to oh, yeah, make Dorado. a movie yeah. again without Spider-Man actually being in the mix, though. 100 million percent, yeah. Yep. 
Okay. Absolutely. We will not see Spider-Man in the El Muerto movie. Absolutely I, not. I like how they're really leaning on the whole, well, we can only pick Spider-Man characters. They couldn't have appeared in anywhere right. else. Uh, is there yeah. anyone who's only been in? Well, I got this one guy who only appeared twice. Yeah, let's do <laughs> oh, that. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, Sanford Panich, who is the Sony Motion Picture Group president, said, sometimes we get lucky with perfect casting. We think audiences are going to be excited by where these Marvel characters are headed. What? Mm-hmm. Is this the new Marvel legend? Guys. <laughs> Bad Bunny? Absolutely. Bad Bunny? Guys. I saw. I, go ahead. You are. You guys are also. I don't know. Maybe Marco's not. But you're underestimating how fucking big this is. Bad oh, Bunny Ty, is Tyler, huge. Ty, stop it. Stop. Stop. Don't, don't start is. that. Don't start that shit. Listen. I know who Bad Bunny is. I like Bad Bunny. I saw him go off the top rope. I've seen him wrestle. I saw him Canadian in the Royal Destroyer. Rumble. Yeah. Bad Bunny is great. Bad Bunny is huge. I understand. That's not what we're ribbing. What we're ribbing is that Bad Bunny is not an actor. What yeah. we're ribbing is that Bad Bunny is playing El Muerto, who's hardly a character. We're ribbing the fact that this is happening in the Sony universe of Marvel films. That's what we're ribbing. That's Don't you the know bit. better at this point? Like I think it, I think it's genius, honestly. Oh boy. I think it's genius. Smart. This is good business. I think it's good business. I think it's bad execution. I don't know that Bad Bunny's out here going to be stealing hearts and Academy Awards with El Muerto, right? Like, that's the shit that Sony needs at the moment, and I don't know that he's finna to deliver that. I'm going to say this with a compl- – I'm going to be 100% honest, and I'm super serious when I say this. Bad Bunny has a charm and charisma that I think 100%. extends past language barriers, um, which is something you don't really see. Um, like like his promo work in WWE, Sean, was fine. But you got to admit, the dude has charisma, even yeah. when he's not talking. Sure, like Nothing the dude just e- exudes it. Um, all, all true. And he's just, this dude's living his fucking best life. This dude said, "I I grew up watching wrestling. What am I what am I gonna do? Fucking not only get into wrestling, but have probably the best match of the night at that WrestleMania. Maybe the second best or something. Like that match was fucking good." Um, he works his ass off in music like, and in the other shit he does. So he's like, all right, let me be a superhero now, too. Like, dude to is killing it. Um, highest Spanish album sales of all time for Bad Bunny. So the market, even outside of the U.S., even though Spanish is the second most spoken language in the U.S., um, is huge. And there might be an untapped market here. Um, I, I have faith that he can actually work the dude can work we can we can say that much whether or not he can act is a question but i think he will at least try his damnedest even though it's a fucking el muerto role like you know um, let me know I, when we no longer have to take this seriously i'm i'm kind of ready for this this if you would have showed me my reaction to jared leto as morbius compared to this like man i'm excited for this i'm ready for this also it's a wrestling movie like that alone I'm cool with it. I'm How do you know it's a wrestling movie? This dude, this dude's playing a, a pro wrestler. Wow, he appeared in two comic books. They can do whatever they want. You think they well, give a shit sure, about what they sure. did in the they comic? Can, yeah, they, they said, don't need to take it. Yeah. They said, listen, Bad Bunny wants to be in a in a Marvel movie. What character can he be? Can he play Aranya? Oh, shit, no. Can't do that. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, uh, that Webb? guy. Oh, on, no, we're doing that one. I forgot. Skates. The roller skate guy. No, he's black. Shit. Um, oh, the wrestler guy, I'm wet though. Right, Bad Bunny wrestled. Perfect. Let's do it. You, you think a, a Sony big head executive was like, yo, I remember reading this comic once. Or I think it was like two issues of this pro wrestler. <laughs> no, they went on wikipedia.com, looked up every single Spider Man villain, clicked literally every name, saw the Spanish one, and set up. Hit. I think it's the opposite way. I think they're like, all right, we want Bad Bunny. What can he do? Um. Uh. Look up wrestlers. Can we do anything? Oh, there's a Spider-Man wrestler character. All right, we have the rights to that. Let's do that. I think this is based on Bad Bunny rather than it being a some C thing. No, 
of course it's based off yeah. Bad Bunny. The point is that they didn't have other options. They couldn't say all the wrestlers in Marvel. They could only say all the wrestlers that have appeared in a Sony comic book. Yo, and this is literally get... the only one they had. It's not just the only wrestler they had. It's the only Spanish character they had. Well, we That's got, bad. Uh, they could they got Black tiger. Tarantula. They're White, white Tiger. Ti- yeah. White Tiger. Yeah. He's the Puerto Tarantula too. is another one. Black Spider is another one. We have no idea the, the legality. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, Bonesaw could come back. Yeah, Jackariah's right. Bonesaw. I mean, maybe not, but they could just uh, have Ezekiel play him. I don't know. If you told me <laughs> if you told me that Bad Bunny was going to be a character in a Spider-Man movie, I'd say sure. Like, if the next Spider-Man movie was going to feature, you know, uh, Peter trying to make money and going and doing a wrestling match, and he ends up wrestling with El Muerto, and then they end up, like, teaming up, that's fun. I'm into it. But just a, a whole movie based around this, hard pass. However, in the spirit of fun, I do have a Pals Top 5 related to this news. Oh. The Top 5 records broken by Bad Bunny playing El Muerto. Okay. okay. All right. So number one, fewest appearances in comics for a main <laughs> character in a film. Sure. All right. <laughs> Number two, biggest star playing least known comics character. Okay. Okay. Sure. First Spanish character to be the title character of a big two superhero movie. This is a slight that's de- cheat. That's that's depressing. <laughs> it's, it, it, it is depressing. It's a little bit of a cheat. I'll explain it because technically, well, Gamora's name is not on the movie, but that's Gamora... Yeah. Obviously, is played by Zoe Saldana, but her name's not in the movie. So there you go. Mm, in the, ti- yeah, in the yeah, title yeah, of the character. movie. Yeah. Yep. Uh, biggest traditionally non actor, so a person whose primary fame is not based in acting, to play mm-hmm. the main character in a superhero movie. Uh, I think Drax, again, maybe a little, not a title character, but. You think Bad Bunny's not bigger than Drax? Then Dave. Oh no! Oh, yeah, bad money. Okay, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah. What, what about Angelina Jolie playing Thena? But she's, she's an a, actor. She, what she is known oh, for being? Oh. What do you think she was? It, just a person who adopts children? No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm like in terms of like the biggest like whatever star of a thing. Oh, just, just, this only applies. This category only applies to non-actors. Okay, okay. And then the fifth one is first title character of a big two film whose name is used by both companies for different characters. Uh-huh. There is an El Muerto in DC. And guess no what? Size. That character sucks too. I got to say, I think there is this, this IP is rife for potential. Potential. Oh my God, Tyler, you're killing me. Because Dude, there's nothing about it. It's just, you know, you know what this all is? it is. All this it is, is just a mess. And the Fox films being the yeah. best all over again. No, yeah. I'm not saying it, this. This could be bad. This could be bad. Uh, it's <laughs> the opposite of Phil. Could be bad. Um, but like, there's, there's like, you just all you have for this character is a name and a mask that gives you wrestling powers. That's literally it. <laughs> wrestling like, powers. That's, that's fucking that's, every that's, superhero movie. That's his power, though. Like that's what mask, that's what Captain America does. He puts on the luchador mask and he gets superpowers. My biggest gripe with this is, uh, Bad Bunny, he 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 ain't the most swole fella. He's kind of he's kind of scrawny. He's like one of those um, those people Jim Cornette would hate. You know what I mean? Like uh, he's just not a flippy guy. He's not. Yeah, yeah. He's one of those flippy guys that uh, uh people people don't like. Um, but uh, let's see how they transform that. I, I'm ready for like, yeah. What kind of cameos can we get in here? Are we gonna get uh, John Cena be his his uh his main antagonist? This is John Cena's MC, uh, you know Marvel role you, for the Spider Man. Do you mean Spider Man? His main antagonist, Spider Man. Only antagonist. I, I don't. What do we? Yeah, it's well, only. You can't well, say main. We did. We did talk about Dorado. True. Dorado yeah, was got, a factor. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. You know, that's that's the only the Dorado the, the, the only the only two villains he has, and only one of them can appear. So I think we know who the main villain is going to be in this film. Very similar to my main villain, Doritos. <laughs> um. Well, you know what, Tyler, you sucked all the fun out of this bit for me. I'll tell you that. I'm no, excited. I dig like, the I'm optimism. really ready. I like it. 
I want no. a wrestling movie, Sean. I think that's where it is. Like, I want like a fun wrestling movie. And if it's like luchador wrestling, that could be. That could be. Put put I don't that, know, cycle clown be. here. You know, just watch Nacho Libre, man. Like I do not like Nacho Libre. It's the great. What do you mean? That's the greatest movie of all time. I I, I did not like it as a kid. Uh, and yeah, same. I don't. I can't deal with this. Big disappoint. Let's let's talk about something else because I can't handle my oh, man. My the sadness. Luchador section of the new Hellboy movie was the only good part of that movie. No, oh my God, dude. All right, listen. Uh, in other bad news, um, bad money. <laughs> John Watts has stepped down as the director for the Fantastic Four reboot at Marvel. Now, there will be people who are very pleased with this. Those of us in the land who did not enjoy the most recent trilogy of Spider-Man films, we call those people wrong. Um, But uh, those of us who did not enjoy those movies will probably rejoice because someone else is going to have to direct Fantastic Four. I only saw he, one Spider-Man movie, so I'm not one of those people. So, which one did you see? The first one? The last Homecoming. One. Oh no, way home. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. I his his reasoning for it, I think I can respect. So, Tyler, please. The alleged <laughs> reason. I just. What is with you, man? You're taking all this shit at face value today. You're supposed to be cynical. Guy, I'm. My fever is breaking right now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's I told weird. you, it's like I got, he got some energy or something. I got delusional brain. Oh no, my body is aching right now. I do. I already drank all my freaking cure all warm ginger ale. Like I got nothing right now, besides and, bad bunny. <laughs> and you took the time in your sick haze to sing the praises of bad bunny. When I was trying to do a bit dunking on the some seat, don't you know when we're supposed to be working on a bit for TikTok, Tyler? Um, I got to be positive on Bad Bunny on TikTok. That's how you get the views. Remember what happened with Drake? Anyway, uh, so John Watts says that the reason he is stepping down is because after doing uh, three movies in five years and wrapping up that whole trilogy and all the involvement, uh, he has decided that he wants to spend some time with his family and get off the Marvel hamster wheel. That's the alleged reason. Um, and everybody's happy. I mean, no one, they're not happy, <laughs> but, you know, Kevin Feige and Louis, S- Louis uh, D'Esposito both told Deadline that, uh, you know, they understand the reasoning and they wish John the best. Um, I don't know if I buy this. Okay. I don't know if I buy it. But it's at face value. Why wouldn't you? Because I don't think that all directors know what it's going to be like when they have to jump into the MCU and handle a property as important as Spider-Man. Think about the fact that John Watts made each Spider-Man movie not knowing whether or not Marvel would still have the rights to the character after it was over. So, for example, after Far From Home came out, the deal was done. There was no spider-man in the mcu so all of a sudden john watts who thinks that he's got job security for the next few years he don't know what's going on then on top of that he's going in a whole different direction for spider-man 3 we're talking about craven we're talking about all kinds of things kingpin was rumored various things then all of a sudden it's like hey actually let's do a, a weird incarnation of the sinister six okay guess we're doing that but only five so, of them but oh Five plus Spider-Man, which comes from the Ultimate Spider-Man uh, comic book. Uh, so yeah, I think he's. I think he just doesn't want to deal with that anymore. I think there was too much pressure. I, but I would. It's weird because one wouldn't assume that with uh, Fantastic Four, that's at minimum a trilogy. Then that is a secure trilogy. I don't think he wants to be on the hamster wheel though. Like after everything, do you really want to say, "Yeah, let's do that again"? Let's put ourselves through that hell. I I would also argue that the Fantastic Four in the current MCU is much more important than where Spider-Man was in the MCU at that point um, in terms of the future. Like, we're always going to have a Spider-Man movie. People are going to watch a Spider-Man movie. Fantastic Four has had a rocky history um, in movies. And I think that they are banking on the Fantastic Four being one of those new linchpins for the MCU that 
you know, Captain America or Iron Man was at the time. Um, and that pressure of having to do that with a property that is, I would say, almost antiquated at some points. The, the idea of the first family of Marvel is a hard, or at least allegedly hard thing, people have described it as being hard, to do in the modern era. Um, and there's a lot of pressure there. I wouldn't want it, to be honest. So, but but I feel like he has a good track record, like regardless sure. of sort of the situation behind him and behind the Spider-Man films. I mean, they were fun. They they got me to go see the next sequel, right? Like it it. I think it, it, for me, I think it's a shame that he's hopping off. I understand and totally respect it, but um, it's a shame because I think he did a good job, and I would have liked to have seen his take on on this. And now we're sort of back in this whole limbo of finding a director and assuming from there script changes and this sort of just continues to get pushed back. So there was a little bet that came up in the discord hmm. uh, between Kefis and Manny, because Manny said that this movie he believed would firmly release in 2024. And Kefis said, I don't know if this movie is ever coming out. And so Kef has said, let's let's bet an omnibus. So winner <laughs> uh, loser gets the winner an omnibus on his end saying that this movie will not release on or before December 31st, 2024. I think I want to take that action. A good bet. It's a good odds. What uh on what side? You're saying it will release in 2024? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I could see it get delayed. Honestly, I don't think I don't think that Marvel, because of the uh, importance, as you guys laid out of the Fantastic Four, um, I don't think that if, if Fantastic Four fits into Marvel's future plans, I don't know if they can afford a delay. I would also but say they've been, they've been delaying everything. Yeah. That is true. I'll take your bet. I'll take your bet. I I don't think it will. Uh, I don't not think it will come out. I think it will come out. But I think twenty twenty four is going to be too soon. That's that's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I I was being dramatic, but I said twenty twenty six. I'm thinking five. That's too far. Twenty five probably five. makes the most sense. Yeah. I, I, I would say that that's probably the latest that this film could release. Um, I would I would also say get back to me next week after I see Doctor Strange and if see if anything's seated there. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I mean, yeah, I, I'd yeah, like to say uh, that too. So. Yeah, we'll, maybe we'll we see. should revisit we'll next week. <laughs> should, we wait? Yeah, should we wait for this? Well, All right. It. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This movie is not listed among phase four films. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't mm -hmm. believe. I don't think so. Which means that Marvel's going to need a big tent pole to kick off phase five. Yeah. And I don't think there's any better way to do that than with Marvel's first family. Kefis, I'm taking your action. Okay. So it'll be you and me. Loser buys the winner and omnibus. Let's set a price. Let's set a, let's set a, a limit on how much it can cost because we don't know what the future holds. So let's say you can pick any omnibus that does not exceed the price of a hundred bucks. You go in stock trades, get a decent one for seventy five. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say eighty actually. Let's do it. Eighty bucks. <laughs> you you love you a lo you love a long game bet, Sean. I really do. I think <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> and then in two years, we can come back and I can be reading the, the omnibus that Kevin's had to buy. Yeah, there we go. Uh, he's, he's, he's agreeing to it. Challenge has been yep. made. 80, 80, 80 it is. Kefis and it's agrees. Be, 80 it is. All right. And watch, watch well, this be an there. omnibus that Kefis gets you and then you get it uh, in the mail the next week. Uh, <laughs> yep. Because you forgot you could order it on Amazon. So oh. It'll be the whole Hick Minute omnibus that Sean's going <laughs> to order right now. Dude, I almost bought that the other day. It's going to be Ten of Swords sure. again. No, is it out? <laughs> Ten of Swords. Oh, the Hickman Omnibus. I think it came out a few weeks ago, maybe oh, even a little bit longer. Uh, the X Men one did. Yeah. Yeah, the X Men one. Yep. Yep. Oh. Uh, 
Uh, real quick, let's talk about the new Frank Miller announcement. Yeah, Frank Miller and Dan Didio, whoa, nice. are teaming up for a new publishing line called Frank Miller Presents. And what is Frank Miller presenting? Fedora's. Well, <laughs> I thought that's what the serving them. Fedora looks. Uh, so there's two there's two sides to this announcement, right? This is what they allege they're presenting. This is the this is the tell part, all right? The tell part is that they're presenting. <laughs> oh my god, they're presenting that they're going to be showing off new creators. So this is what Frank Miller said. Investing in artists and the future of comics has always been my one true passion and creative cult. Dan, Sillin, and I couldn't be more proud to be launching Frank Miller Presents, which will serve as fertile ground for storytellers and new creations. Our focus for this publishing company is to cultivate a fellowship of artists and writers to mentor, collaborate, and, pu- and push forward not only each other, but the art form as well. Okay. All right. Respect that. Great. Now, here's what they announced. Here's what they've told us. Here's what they have told us we will be getting up front. More Sin City. And more the Ronin. Ronin Book 2, Sin City 1858. What does that have to do with up-and-coming creators? (laughs) You got to draw people in somehow. That's fair. I think it'd be really cool if the announcement also included some up-and-coming creators. Fair, yeah. Um, I think this is a move for Miller at the moment to be able to, I don't know, tell a continuing story that he wants to. Let's say maybe he has some ideas that he has in the tank past few years. Um, But if he's going to commit to bringing up new people, I think to your point, that should have been in this announcement. But... If he's going to stick to that commitment, I'm hoping the next announcements are nothing of his, only of people that, like, this is the the sort of seed funding for that, and then going into the the, the new creators. I don't know, man. No. I, uh, even, this stinks. No, even knowing the next part, Frank Miller has not traditionally been that kind of champion. This screams you know what I mean? like, milking to me. Yeah. Uh, semen is is another <laughs> kind of milk. Yeah, like, I feel like they're just milking. Oh, Sin City. <laughs> I, I, that's what I feel like, though. I mean, like, this does not seem to be an announcement about creators and yeah. uh, new talent. It seems like that is the excuse for mm-hmm. the other thing. that Sean, did or did you check out the follow-up today? You're talking about the, are you talking about the NFT? Yeah, let's, that, yeah, that's what this let's is about. Go. All right. So yeah. even even if even if that's what he wanted to do with the new creators, if he wanted to like lead with Sin City and Ronin, like if he got if he just quietly pushed new creators on those books, like sweet, sure, because he could carry his own imprint. Sure, for like sure. Miller verse, yeah. I mean, maybe I not mean, Holy Terror. Maybe when I wouldn't throw Holy Terror ooh, at all. Ooh, yeah, we probably don't want to revisit that on any level. Yeah. I mean, there's a habit. It's good. I don't <laughs> market for it, unfortunately. <laughs> there is a market for it. I wonder if it overlaps uh, with the NFT market. The what? The NFT market. No, that's just too pricey. Yo, the uh, in the Discord, I shared a the NFT that DC announced. It was three hundred dollars. Is it the the Batman one? Yeah, the Bat Cowl or whatever. Oh, I've been getting ads for that like crazy. Same. Oh my god, on Twitter, blowing my yeah. phone up. I, I think we lost Sean uh, inter- intermittently here. Um, but I think it, he, the the fact that he's also trying to do this NFT thing, which he sold for some crazy amount of money, eight hundred and forty k. Let's see, yeah. Let's hear. Let's hear about that. Oh well, shoot. Gosh, I closed the article. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to fill while you were uh, Mr. Freeze for a second there, Sean. So. Am I back or you're good now? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the article, but basically this is the same old song and dance. Uh, he's gonna be 
pushing out NFTs related to this new uh, endeavor. Uh, let's see. So, oh, wow. He actually sold an NFT mm -hmm. uh, already for $840,000. Uh, the winning bid was eight hundred and forty thousand dollars for a Sin City based NFT. He hopefully he sold that coin because that shit's been falling. <laughs> so hopefully he made some money out of that. Dude, you and your NFTs. Look, whatever <laughs> NFTs are bad. Frank Miller's trying to sell NFTs. I just think, I I just think Dan Didio. And Frank Miller together does not scream, let's cultivate the next generation. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't. These are two guys that, you know, are legends in the business. They have had a huge impact on the industry. But I do think that on some level, they go into business for themselves. And some level. <laughs> the, well, I'm trying to be generous. The nature of this announcement does not lend itself to making me feel like this is good for comics. But hey, uh, Frank Miller has a ton of fans. So does Dan Didio. And I would love to see them bring out some new creators. That'd be great. If they do so. Yeah. We'll see. What it just, it just screams of like a venture capitalist that uh, might have liked comics in his spare time. Uh, knows of uh, two people he can contact and say, hey, I can make you a lot of money. Uh, you yeah. want to figure out a way taking, to do it? Taking advantage of the elderly. <laughs> Uh, no, I think this tracks for for Miller, you know, um, but it's like, hey, uh, we can make a lot of money uh, through your fandoms and stuff. It is a slimy feeling to me. I don't like it. The uh, the article does say that there's plans for two new series, Pandora and Ancient Enemies. Yeah. No creative team attached as of yet. <laughs> so like we'll see. Right. But um, I'm hoping within that year he sticks to it. Yeah, can't wait for Pandora. Don't know a single thing about it. I'll pick it up. How do you know? You don't know anything <laughs> about it. You know the title. How do you know you don't want to pick it up? What does that matter? I'm going to support comics. Wow. Oh, there, are plenty of, the... there are plenty of comics to support that aren't Whoever by dudes who have already done it, man. But that's what I'm saying. They, we don't know that that's by him. There's no creative team announced. Right. Okay. So when they announce the creative team and then you find out, that the money that the book makes is funding whatever bullshit NFT or scheme that Frank Miller goes on has going on. Are you going to feel as good about that as you'll feel about purchasing books from uh, what was that initiative we talked about uh, a few uh, weeks IDW ago? One? The IDW, IDW stuff. That's how you make an announcement that's creator focused. Hey, yes, we have Scott Snyder, but we also have these people you've never heard of in your life. I gotta they say, they could have done this. The I would say, like recently, I would have thought, like, oh man, this, thank God, this NFT thing is going away. But now we are we're in our third week in a row. <laughs> back to back, it's 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 bleeding think, into I the think, comics market. I think the fact that it's hit the comics market means it is dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We still don't have digital stuff figured out yet. So, yeah. speaking of dying. There's a lot of dying oh, that happens whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. in uh, Marvel and DC Comics. Oh, I don't, Tyler, I don't know what, why that busts you up. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you did bookend the show with we're going to talk about death in comics. And then we talked about uh, death in the comics industry. So, All right. See, that's you. That's your brain. Hey, I, mean, I saw it. That's what we leave off the air. Nice. Uh, is death in comics meaningless? That's the question that we're answering in the main topic this week. De uh, Justice League number 75 came out. Death of the Justice League. I don't, it's not a spoiler to say that, you know, the Justice League dies. Uh, or do they? Because if you were to buy Batman, Wonder Woman, or Superman comics for the next several months, they're in them, alive and well, not addressing in any way, shape, or form what we saw in Justice League 75. Does that trivialize the events of that comic? Does it matter at all that they died there if we can still read their adventures every single month? Um, how do we feel about Dark Crisis knowing that it's telling us they're dead, but 
for all intents and purposes, for our experience, they're not dead at all. They're hanging around. Is the death and rebirth thing in comics overdone? And I also want to talk about what this could mean, what we could learn, what the MCU, really, the DCFU and the Sum C can learn from comics about how to handle their superhero deaths, i.e. Iron Man, Captain America, yada, yada, yada. That's what we're talking about in our main topic. Twitch, fam, stick around. We'll be back in five minutes or less. Thank you for waiting. And we're back. And we're back. Thank you for waiting. Uh, if you are still with us, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. If you're watching on Twitch, make sure that you do drop that follow if you haven't. If you'd be so kind as to consider giving us a subscription on Twitch, that would be amazing. You can use your Amazon Prime, Twitch Prime subscription. Throw it our way. Costs you nothing. Uh, helps us out. Same as subscribing on Twitch if you're or, uh, sorry, not Twitch, YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you can drop us that subscription. Like the video if you've liked this so far. If you've enjoyed it, if you're looking forward to our main topic, which we're about to get into right now. So uh, as we teased, death is a thing in comics that I think it's probably fair to say is overdone. I don't think that there are a lot of people who fall on either side of this conversation who would disagree with that. They do death all the time. Um, and to the point where I think it's kind of lost its, uh, its luster. So let's go back. When I first started reading comics, I knew that Jean Grey was dead and that they had never brought her back. I knew that Gwen mm-hmm. Stacy and Uncle Ben were dead and that they had never brought them back. And I knew that uh, well, I learned quickly that Thor had died. Um, but I wasn't sure how. I just knew that Thor was gone. That was what that was all I knew about death in comics. And that Superman had died a long time ago, but he came back. Everyone knows that. That's all I knew about death in comics. That was about 2004, 2005. After that, the first major death that I encountered was, of course, Captain America. Mm-hmm. And that was on the... I think it was the front page of, you know, tons of different, um, you know, newspapers and magazines. They talked about it on, you know, television stations that were not comic space like ABC and stuff like that. It was a big deal. It mattered in America anyways, that Captain America had died. That was a relevant thing. Um, Since then, I think that from that very death, The next year we had Batman who died. That was a big deal. And after that, it was just forget it. Everyone started dying. I think they realized pretty quickly what a cash cow that could be. And not only did everybody start dying, it started bringing everybody back to the point where now Jean Grey's back. Gwen Stacy is, I mean, it's not the Gwen Stacy. It's not 616 Gwen Stacy, but it doesn't matter. Might as well be. She's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Gwen Stacy's one of the most popular Marvel characters right now, for sure. Spider-Gwen? Forget it. Uh, So what do you guys think about death in comics? Do you think it matters that they do it so often? Do you think it matters when a character dies? How does it impact you knowing for sure, for sure, that within two years and almost always no more than that, the character that died will certainly come back? I mean, even the Jean Grey thing, she came back in Morrison's run. You know, like, that didn't even last. And sure, she died again in Morrison's run, and then, you know, then they didn't bring her back again for uh, maybe a decade. Ooh, you know, big big deal. Um, but yeah. Almost and, 20 think, years. Yeah. And, and Sean, I think, I think you, when you started reading comics too, you mentioned it, like, at the time, it's probably the worst time for that to even matter to anyone, that... Captain America dies in 2007, 2008. That's the death of the Ca- Captain America around then. Yeah. Then rebirth is 2010. Yeah. You give it two years. Like uh, the Batman oh, death yeah. was probably even more stupid. He was never even off, dead. Kill him off for Island Crisis. Somehow bring him back in Blackest Night, even though he was never dead. Um, yeah, it's botched. It's yeah, that, that was a little botched. Um, and then in rebirth, they did the opposite. Uh, it wasn't rebirth. It was uh, brightest day. They brought you know like Alec Holland back. They brought you know yeah right. uh, yep. 
Uh, you were probably happy about that, Marco. I wasn't um, reading comics then, but no, I okay. collected those issues. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's 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 a gimmick, really. Um, I think it has effect, especially for you know an issue an issue by issue. I think I think the effect is more um, genuine uh, in independent comics, really. I mean, uh, if you. I say death doesn't matter in the big two, but when I was reading Walking Dead in college, um, I remember reading spoilers for Walking Dead, but I remember reading the um, the governor arc in my lecture hall in class in college, and reading the issue where um, Rick's wife gets shot with the baby, um, and I said, "Oh shit!" out loud in the middle of class, <laughs> um, and like that shit worked really worked for what that was but at the same time you know i read the death of you know batman and then batman r.i.p was before that which wasn't the death of him um but uh yeah, that doesn't matter um it, it depends i don't think it matters to the big two at all i, th- yeah, I think from oh sorry go ahead um i was gonna say i i, I don't think that it i think it matters but I think it's a trope for the big two at this point. And I think you have to sort of land on whether or not it's a trope that you like. Because for me, um, my first ever experience running into like a death of sort of series was Death of Wolverine. Because I was following Charles Soule a lot at the time. Mm. And um, that's when I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and before that, I was picking up, you know, one off issues of Swamp Thing because I was filling up my collection. I was trying to find issues and there were consistent issues where death, like a death of would happen because he happened to make an appearance in this issue. And so I picked that up, whatever. And so uh, even historically, it feels like characters would die, be brought back. There was just a whole system there. And that sort of changed my perception because like, well, these comics do it a lot. These, these specific comics seem to do it Whereas to your point, Tyler, indie space, like Saga, you know, uh, a lot of those characters, actually all those characters that have died are never coming back at the end of the day, right? Um, one of the first books that I read with permanent death was um, Why the Last Man. And in that, another Brian K. Vaughn joint, um, you know, you get individual characters that also die and that affects the progression of the characters, growth, the storyline. So I think... You can do those things in a vacuum for the big two. You can make those progressions and see that growth, but you're always at danger of resetting. And you, I feel like it's disingenuous to get mad at that because that's what you're going to those books for. It's mm. so much ingrained into that that it is the trope. The trope is the superhero will die and will be reborn regardless of publication, regardless of the character. Um, there's no, like if you if you get surprised at that at this point, I feel like you're doing something wrong in your reading. And I got a bridge to sell you. <laughs> like, uh, so, so for me, that's sort of where it comes down on is, are you okay with the trope? I think it matters in the vacuum that it, the storyline exists there, but then once it gets reset, it doesn't matter. It gets reset. That, that death doesn't have the same impact and it's contextual based off of how people remember it in continuity or whether they don't or what the hell even is the continuity there. Um, so I think it'll matter insofar as you care about a certain death and recognize that they're coming back at the end of the day. Mm. Uh Shenron says we can see the difference of how death is being treated on titles and covers. The night Gwen Stacy died was at the end of the book. Now the death of a character appears in the cover and is being sold as an arc, not a seminal moment. Yeah, totally. And I think I think that probably started with uh, the death of Superman, right? On the cover, yeah. Maybe even um, uh, Supergirl in Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yep, mm. that was a bigger deal commercially i think than barry allen dying um in that same book did the cover was that for the issue she dies or was it the issue pre after it 
after she dies. Uh, I'm not. 100%. I'm not yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, but for for me, the um, the big one was always Barry Allen. He died in infinite, uh, Christ on Infinite Earths. He would never come back. That was DC's promise, similar to the Jean Grey situation. Um, there were, you know, a few like timey wimey shenanigans that they did because the Flash was known to time travel and, you know, he had like a future history. But at the time, they, they did it really well in that there was one time that someone said to Wally West, I don't remember the exact character or, or what the deal was, but you'll, you'll see bear Allen three times in your life and that will be it. And it happened that way and it worked out really well and it was really cool. Um, and then uh, Jeff Johns brought him back uh, in the return of Barry Allen. And I, for me, that was okay. <laughs> we're done here. Like I'm, I'm the cynic too, was born. Cause, Cause I grew up with Wally West as my flash. Yeah. Yeah. The, the animated justice league. That was uh -huh. Wally West. I was reading, um, was it Wade's run on flash? Yeah. Uh, prior yep. to Barry coming. I didn't know who Barry was when I was reading comics. Yep. Yep. I knew he oh, existed I... and I knew the importance of him. Yeah. Like it was, if you asked me who the flash was, I'd say it's Wally West. And like, yeah, I, I was also another thing where I'm like, oh, man, that, and then Wally West got pretty much written off at that mm -hmm. point. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Thanks for making me pissed off again. And the story wasn't even that good. <laughs> yeah, you're, like it you're, was just it, good. it was just Green Lantern rebirth, Redux. Like it sucked for you know this legendary character to come back, and then they just kind of farted, you know, farted that out, and then went straight into Flashpoint. Um, it just sucks now. <laughs> like. <laughs> I, I wanted to be excited about death of the justice league, but I think, you know, I think, I think it's absolutely right. The, you know, the idea that all these deaths are on the cover and that's what this thing is. So you go in and, and you expect it. So like, what are we doing here? The most recent episode of house polls. That was my big thing was just waiting for the moment. Um, I wanted to see it and it's, promote on the cover right for justice league so i was waiting for the moment and it's just kind of it you know the end plot to a, a, a film and you're just waiting for that moment mm. um i think if you have the history there it probably hit more but otherwise as a casual reader uh and someone who's not well versed in crisis stuff period um it's just a beat and it sucks that it's just a story beat because it feels like it should be more considering the weight that death would typically have outside of the big two, but also for these characters that are so monumental that it should matter. I think that's why I don't agree with the idea that it's, as you said, Marco disingenuous, if it bothers you that they, that they do this, because the fact is that we read these books because we have a connection and it feels like that connection is abused when you sell me on just, Oh yeah, here's this death of a character you really like come buy it. You know, if it happens, like Captain America dying at the end of Civil War, well, in, in Captain America 25, we didn't know that that was going to happen. Yeah. So if you picked up that book on Wednesday, you get to the end of that comic and Cap is dead. That's not at all what we saw coming. That 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 wasn't sold that way. And it mattered because of that. Um, and now these things don't matter. It erodes our ability to enjoy the moment and to feel something about it when it's just a beat, as you said. That's not okay to me. Um, I don't think that it's, it, I don't think we should just accept, oh, it's a trope, because that's, to me, that's saying we accept bad storytelling and a marketing machine that doesn't value our feelings about these characters. And that's what frustrates me. But then we I pick think, up Death of the Justice League. Yeah. I. How do you fight that, though? Because, yeah. you know, do you still buy the books? Well, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna buy the books regardless. Um, but I can definitely right, say right. Like, that was the that was the royal you, not just you know, not just you, 
but like well yeah know. but 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 yeah well, like i'm i'm literally gonna do that right like i'm gonna buy the books regardless but that's because of my fandom i don't think that you step on that knowing oh yeah they'll buy it, they'll buy it so we're just gonna you know sell them this shit gimmick i don't care about events nearly as much as i used to directly because of that abuse like events in the early 2000s or early 2010s was they were everything to me when siege was coming up that's probably the absolute height of my comics love because of the build-up to that event now when these things are happening i i mean we talk about on the show i don't think about because they don't they don't matter they don't don't matter they have eroded the relevance of death and major event storytelling in comics by doing this shit. I would also argue that I think solicitations and the growth of social media kind of adds to that as well. Yeah, and the comics journalism scene. Yeah, we're the issue. <laughs> uh, I think, because you well, can't, you can't like. Yeah. I, I think of where where death mattered ultimate comics marvel's ultimate comics where mm. that was one of the selling points of it if someone dies in this they, they they're pretty much dead um you know, if you know wasp gets physically eaten by blob she's gone she's off the board um but like peter parker's death that was solicited <laughs> you know like he was dying for a good six issues <laughs> and we knew it was going to happen like there was no um surprise there um but to that rule Peter Parker came back. Right, well. He did. He did come back. Yeah, eventually. Uh, uh, it might have been. I don't know how exactly he came back. It might have been a little. It could be a clone. I don't remember. I, I dropped off. It, yeah. Like the, the, and then the ultimate thing kind of just died. By the time, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the time he did come back, the ultimate line was dying, so it didn't matter. Yeah, and they already had plans for Miles to kind of cross over into the six one six. So, in fact, he did at that point already. Um. But, like, we knew that was coming, I think. But, but, like, I remember still enjoying the story, even though I knew where it was heading to. Because it it also knew you knew where it was heading to. So it kind of had to play with that. It was like we were dying slowly with Peter. Um, and really the surprise was Miles being a very good character. Like, that mm-hmm. was the, sur- the, the surprise. And, and what I liked about it was the rebirth, not the death. Um, and I think that's where, like, death will never stop happening in comics. It's It's... It, it might as well be a synonymous with capes at this point. Like you're always going to have both of those two things in superhero comics. Um, it's a character essentially at this point um, because you want to be able to tell stories and you can't really write off characters, uh, you know, just to write them off without really killing them. You can't just say, oh, super... I mean, the way I can look at it is like Superman currently. How do you write Superman off where he's not in Metropolis um, and you can have his son, ro- you know, come into the role of Superman? They sent him to the kill- world. You can kill him, yeah, which they didn't do, which I think we were afraid of when they were first announcing that. Um, or they d- what they did is actually really good. The War World stuff in Action Comics is fantastic. Um, but, I, yeah, it's it's hard to separate. But it's Tony in a case, coma, but- like... It's it's not hard. It just takes <laughs> they, storytelling. And they brought Tony back as a hologram, Tupac style, um, like a week later. Yeah, but my point is that he wasn't dead. They wanted the physical Tony Stark off the board, and they got it. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think there are a lot of examples like that, but unfortunately, death sells. Yeah. 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 Is there? Is there a way that death will work for you now? You know, C.W. Gordon uh, brought up in the chat, bring back Alfred. It's been teased. <laughs> Has it? <laughs> uh, if you're reading Robin currently, it's been teased and talked about. Oh, yeah. fucking hell. Yeah. That was cheap. That was cheap. I, um, I think Tom King's even said that he maybe doesn't agree with that decision. <laughs> yeah. I think there are some characters that you probably should never do that to. I think Alfred is one of them. I think Aunt May, unless you were really gonna kill her and like leave her gone, I don't think you do it. I think it's I think it's just bad. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and because then when they come back, it's like, whoa, whoa, how is this possible? Like, they're just a straight up human. How is Uncle Ben walking around again? Um, is there a way it could work for me? Yeah, I think the way that it worked for me when they killed off Cap, you know, when it's when it's organic and interesting, calling Batman R.I.P., Batman R.I.P., established a mood and a tone for that book that had you wondering at every turn how is batman going to die how is grant going to execute this the deck was stacked you know we knew that things were looking bad is batman going to be able to overcome this or not and you know dc editorial shenanigans and politics aside i think it was very well told Mm. Um, of course, we now know that RIP doesn't stand for rest in peace. It stands for rotten purgatory. But that's a that's more to do with DC than Grant. Do Is that you, true? So are, yeah, absolutely. I know about that. Yeah. Huh. Uh, are you so? Are you saying <clears throat> lean into it more because you can't surprise us anymore? Like a surprise isn't going to work, and it feels cheap, and um, we know it's not going to stick. Are you saying like what, what, with the death of the Justice League, what we just read? This league 75 it's on the cover they're leaning into it they're like say, they're saying this is the story we're telling um you don't even try and be surprised like we're killing them no i'm saying if you don't want to try to surprise us because you want that you know cash grab tell a great story have there be a really good reason why these characters are dying you know do the best you can i think death of justice league the way marco broke it down is exactly right and he was just waiting to see them die. And I think that is the worst possible way to do a death. They didn't hmm. do anything to make it feel like, wow, this character I've been reading for all these years. You know, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, I can't recall her dying before. I'm sure one of you guys can correct me, but I don't remember seeing that. Um, she's just dead. She Not even metal. cool, really. Hmm? Like She died like two years ago in, in death metal. No, she, or, she, 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 she ascended. Metal. And she, uh, yeah, I, it was more of a thematic death, but yeah. Yeah, I. It is there a expectation from you guys moving forward that beyond death just being a part of comics, um, we will ever again see a permanent death? I don't think so. Not in comics, no. Comic book movies, yeah. I don't think in comics. Um, I think it's possible, but you know, like if you're talking about someone like, you know, the shocker, can the shocker die? Can like shocker one die permanently? And then they have like shocker two. Yeah, sure. Can electro die and then electro take over, you know, the, 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 um, the woman electro, for example. Yeah, that can happen. Um, as far as like major characters that sell comic books, no, never. Um, and that's unfortunate. Like, I don't think that I don't think that Batman should be dead for you know twenty years, or they should never publish it. That, that's ridiculous and silly. I just think, okay, we're all hip to the game. If you're gonna kill Batman, make it a great story. You don't need to tell me up front. You don't need to try to sell me on it. However, it is that you choose to do this, don't just do it for shock value, and don't just do it to sell. You know, to just just to sell this book, tell a great story. Um, it sucks that the that the characters are still in their respective books as if nothing happened. That really bothers me. But I'll are put you... that to the side for the sake of time and the fact that you know that's less of an issue. Um, go ahead, Tyler. You got a face. I, I was gonna say, do you, do you expect DC to actually communicate internally to have correct uh, publishing initiatives at this current? There was a... There was a pro- a point in time where the whole publishing line stopped yeah. because Superman died. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Um, so I I don't think it's above expectation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, think oh, I they agree. Just suck I think, shit. <laughs> like, I think current DC <laughs> as a company is directionless. Yeah, um, sure. I think there's some direction within individual comics and storylines and even uh, sections of editorial. Sure, but as a whole, no. I mean, we're even this whole dark crisis situation, right? This is from the what the shattered backbone of five G. Yeah. You know, they're scrambling to fit pieces together. 
But one of the the most recent comics we we read, it had like a five G question yep. mark, whatever, right? Like, mm, yeah, yeah. They, they're, they're still dealing with the repercussions of even that. So I don't think that they're anywhere close to having some sort of unified <laughs> universe, let alone editorial, getting on the same page. It feels like the DC line has PTSD from Didio leaving. Like, <laughs> like it's still trying to come to terms with that. Yeah, I agree. I think this was always going to happen. Just under Didio, I think it would have gone down differently. I think Didio had an idea to commit even further on the idea of getting rid of those characters. Um, he had like a whole agenda to where they would get rid of the big three and others and replace them with the new 5G characters. And that's just what it was going to be. Um, and he got a lot of pushback. You cannot say to the executives at Warner Brothers, hey, our big plan is to kill Batman for five years. You know, you can't say that. It, it, that That's like that long-term thinking, though, that I think you could build a really good story out of and to Kale's earlier point, build to make a death and or even a return matter because you have that long-term period. You can work with the characters. You can build them up individually. And ultimately, you know, it, maybe you're not promoting Batman comes back to life or something, but at some point, the resurrection there can can matter you're right but the companies are they don't do that anymore yeah you're not going to see a major line-wide decision uh be based on good story uh, like I, I think the only go again we barely get creators on books for 50 sure. issues anymore yeah i think the only way we see a permanent death in comics is if a character too similar becomes more important outside mm. of comics. If all of a sudden right. Miles Morales is popularity supersedes Peter Parker and kids are growing up thinking, Oh, Miles is Spider-Man. Who's Spider-Man? Oh, it's Miles Morales. Then maybe you can kill Peter Parker off in the comics. Nah, if oh. uh, Peter Parker is nah. like a hard one to say, but I think like, like, uh, I don't know, like we won't see if they don't ever recast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. And then they, you know, I don't know, Riri sticks as Iron Heart going forward. Maybe you kill off Iron Man in the comics. He wasn't that important prior to the MCU, you know. Um, you can always return but to I think, that status. Yeah, I, but I think any kind of kind of death will be dictated by not the comic books mm. and whether or not yeah. it sticks. It's transmedia at this point. You know? I think you can get away with that with like Nick Fury. Like you, like White Nick Fury could die. White Nick Fury could die and never return. Thematically, he has. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Someone, a character who doesn't sell comics, but has an alternate in the MCU, for example, who's who's bigger than them. Yes, absolutely. Hawk but I don't think you can do that with any character that sells comics. Yeah. Speaking of the MCU. And the DCFU and the SUMC. I do want to end this conversation by asking uh, what our opinion is about death and rebirth within the films. Because we really haven't seen a lot of the rebirth part. We've seen some of the death. Um, and I, I'm going to focus on the uh, MCU just because it's the most developed of them all. <laughs> but um, obviously in the MCU, we lost Gamora. We lost um, Black Widow, we lost Tony, um, we lost Vision. And to some degree, those characters are being represented in other ways. Um, I think Tony's probably the only one who isn't in any way. Steve is not dead, so he doesn't count. White Vision is running around somewhere. Same um, actor too. Yeah. Sorry? Same actor for Vision too, so he might right. as well not have died. Gamora died, but we got past Gamora. Um, and Black Widow died, and she's probably never coming back. But we do have her sister. Um, so they have worked around it. Do you guys think that it will break the immersion of the films if they were to say, you summon the Dragon Ball, summon Shenron, and bring oh, the Tony Stark back? Uh, you're breaking up a bit, Sean, but I think I got uh, what you were you're asking there at the end. Um, I think we are in a transitional period for that. 
I think uh, I yeah. think characters like Yelena Belova and Kate Bishop are kind of the the canary in the coal mine. We'll see if this actually works. Honestly, I find Florence Pugh as Yelena much more really? charismatic than I ever found Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, she's um, sassy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I thought I think Florence Pugh is a fantastic actress. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I think we're in the will see stage. Um, if it works with certain characters, like like Black Widow, that's another one of those characters where like you can write that character off. You know, even in the, inside the comics. I, I mean, we haven't really seen much of Lena, Yelena since in the comics. I think she was in the Winter Guard book. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, Kay Bishop's another one where like if, if that if that starts track if that tracks then it will teach them you don't need to recast. You can evolve the character. Yeah. Yeah. Does that translate to comics afterwards? Who fucking knows at that point, but... I don't think it will. I don't think we get, like, the next, you know, Yelena series or one-shot or whatever it is. One-shots, maybe, if they tie into, like, a big film release, if if they decide to do that. I don't think you get an ongoing because the comics reading audience knows that um, there's only the one Black Widow, like with the the from a main character perspective. And for uh, so I'm I'm finishing um, the Hawkeye series. I'm on like episode five, I think, right now. Mm-hmm. And Kate Bishop's really good. I mm-hmm. I like her character. I like the way that she is dealing with um clint and i think that there is a way forward with these individual characters um even something like sam wilson as the new cap like these are all those that evolution and for me the immersion would be broken if we get a return of one of these characters of either iron man or of um a young chris evans as whatchamacallit as cap um, if these characters were to come back, I would only want to see them in a past iteration because for me, the MCU has already doubled down on the future with new characters on the future with new um, new people behind the masks. And I like that. I, that, that um, feeling of finality is good because I don't get that in the comics, mm-hmm. but within the same superhero universe i can get that in the movies and that's satisfying because that feels more of what i would have wanted to experience in the comics where you don't have the or where you do have the death and the rebirth the death and the rebirth it's weird oh sorry kill go ahead i was gonna say i think that's sort of the thing i think the mcu has uh, in so far, like it's one long story telling multiple stories, and so far it's done a really good job of of making sense of things that should be final, you know, the and passing on legacies and and things like that. I think the linchpin there really will be Tony Stark, um, and you know, I think I think. Potentially with Kang, uh, you know, and I know we said this about Thanos and the snap, but with Kang, you know, we could see them try to reinitialize, you know, some of those past characters because it doesn't feel like there is any one followable character at the moment, you know? I think right now, especially in the MCU, uh, the only thing you can really, you can't really follow a character, but you can follow the fact that they are really leaning into a young Avengers. And I think whether or not that is called young Avengers or like Avengers will be our answer here. If they call that, like that new team of young heroes, the Avengers, then we're just evolving with Marvel. We're not, we're not going back to the past and back to the old well. Um, They are just, getting those new characters out there, those, those legacies continuing, um, which is kind of what I want because Marco's right. I'm not getting that in comics, you know? So I, I would like to see Tony Stark back. Um, you know, there's so many stories that 
are lost to us with the loss of that character. Um, I feel the same way about Black Panther, even though obviously the situation surrounding that is extremely unique. Um, uh, I think that being a lot less, you know, loose with death in the MCU is necessary. Um, And they've done a great job of working around it so far. But I don't like the idea of saying, okay, if someone dies, they're off the table. Because unlike the comics, um, I can count on, for me, for my taste, the MCU delivering on a great story that actually warrants the return. Uh, Whereas in comics, it's probably not the case. The MCU doesn't need to bring back Tony Stark. If they chose to do it, It would be because there was a good reason. And I believe in that. And that makes it a much, much easier pill to swallow. They could tell stories for 100 years without needing Tony Stark. So that's my thing with the MCU. And when you say you want Tony Stark back, do you want Robert Downey Jr. back? Or are you okay with them recasting and bringing somebody else back? That I don't care about. You can recast. Bring on on Tom Cruise, whatever. Uh, That dude's fucking crazy but uh, But that's a good that way that's a good point though like i feel if if they were to recast and it be the a tony stark i don't know that i would hmm i don't know that i would hate that we have a multiverse now the seeds are there exactly to do it we're we've already conditioned the audience to know what a multiverse is and we're going to be doing it more next week yeah like they have they have their outs everywhere there are variants. Really do whatever. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The variants, so the whole, I think, solve a yeah. lot of that for sure. A whole TV show that conditioned an audience to be prepared for something like this for sure. Uh, genius, Catherine honestly. says uh, it would be interesting to see heroes come back later on, reborn, to see more of the comic stories be told. However, I don't really need that now. I'm good moving forward. Then when it comes time to reboot would do a legit reboot don't tell me the same stories with these characters does that make sense yeah i think it does um you know if there's a reason if there's a legitimate reason do it if there's not it's fine we got 10 years of tony stark stories uh hitting cool down on that for a little while is perfectly okay and if there's a reason let's do it that's that's how i feel um so i think yeah i was gonna say i I do feel a little robbed though we never got a read and tony interaction yeah i'm devastated by that that really sucks i hope Shoot, I'd rather lose the bet. I'd rather owe Kefis an omnibus than them put out a Fantastic Four film with Tony still dead. Oh, it's that's happening. Oh, it is. Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, if I, if I, if if they could bring back Tony Stark in Multiverse of Madness, and then I owe Kefis eighty dollars down the road, sure. I'm cool with that. Sure. Cool with that. Let us know what you guys think about it. What do you think about death in comics? Is it overdone? Is it is it hacky at this point? Um, should the MCU be more open to just outright resurrecting characters through whatever means? Or is that something that they should not do? Should death be permanent in the MCU? Should death be permanent in comics? Should the big two just say, you know what? No, if you die, you die. That's never going to happen. Uh, there are plenty of ways that you can let us know your thoughts about this. Of course, you can always join our Discord server where we're having these kinds of discussions all the time. Uh, join join our Discord, guys, um, where you can have, <laughs> you know, we we talk about this stuff. Apparently, we make bets all over the Discord. Uh, Wherever that's we a thing we've been doing. <laughs> I've missed that one. Um, I guess we'll wait for Sean to come back for him to, to plug himself. Uh or he might need to just unplug his internet at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's what he needs. Uh, follow us on YouTube, uh, socials, all that stuff at the Comics Pals. Shoot us an email if you want to. Um, and join us on Thursdays for Pals Polls. Kale. Whoa, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. now what the can. fuck was that plug? Oh my God. <laughs> Twitch.tv slash the Comics Pals, Saturdays at 10 15 a.m. Eastern to. Make your Saturdays, start your weekends with the pals. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Eastern for pals pulls. 
don't know what books we're going to be reading. If you're on Patreon, you'll find out early. Patreon.com slash the comics pals. Appreciate every single one of you lovely patrons. Go check it out. There are tiers for every kind of person. If you enjoy the show, we appreciate the support. If you can't, that's totally okay too. YouTube.com slash the comics pals. If you don't listen to this show live, that's a great place to check it when it drops after the fact. Mondays for this show. Uh, Fridays for Pals Pools. Doctor Strange, the Oath Book Club, out this Tuesday. Early access for patrons. I think I hit everything. Kale. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Comics Pals. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Toto Into. That's T O T O I N T O W. You can find my work at kalewar.com. That's C A L E W A R D.com. Uh, I found a copy of Pokemon White this week for uh, not obscene Pokemon prices. I had it for like 30 bucks. Pokemon White? That's, that's yeah. what is that? Uh, they were black and white, remember? Oh, oh right. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's not yeah. some ha- hacked version. I thought yeah. it was like, yeah. <laughs> that's like, uh, that's so, cover price, essentially. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. A little less, but yeah. Uh, very excited about that. So that's what I'm playing. Uh, my newsletter comes out this week for the Patreon uh, fam. So if you want to know what happens in my brain, um, you probably don't, and that's fine. Yeah, that's not that's not but, selling uh, Patreon, Cal. <laughs> sign, uh, sign up for Patreon, and uh, <laughs> uh, you can find out. We should do a a, a a a drinking game where we take a shot every time someone says Patreon on this podcast. Fucking shit, Uh-oh, definitely about we'll about be, as uh, much as we say come. We'll be awesome. <laughs> I mean, all of our all the Patreon money can go towards Kale's uh, therapy. Uh, that's what we'll do. <laughs> oh, you're in the UK. You got like universal uh, health care there. Right? I, I ain't. It ain't for that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I need therapy after this episode, Marco. <laughs> if you can follow me at Mr. Marco Nomoto on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, talking about death in comics, come talk to me about whether we should even die. Right? What Ooh. happens when we put my brain into a robot? Do we persist? Those are the questions I want to think about. Ooh, do Android um, stream? You have a newsletter and, for that. Yeah, I have a newsletter for that. Stay tuned. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'm going to be reading a uh, romance manga for the next week. So come talk to me about that. I'll Tyler. post it in the Weeb channel. Um, I don't even need to plug anything. I'll be dead by next week, apparently. So. <laughs> I'm not doing so hot, guys. Um, yeah, you could follow me at the Tyler Olson on Instagram and Twitter. Um, what have I been doing lately? I've been playing Overwatch 2 beta, which is fun. If anyone has the beta and wants to play, uh, let me know. Um, my uh, newsletter will be coming out after Kale's, and it's going to have uh, not as of a... I mean, my idea is to not make it as deep and philosophical as the other the other two, so sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, don't worry. Mine's not that. So. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> is the thing I made you uh, uh, involved with that thing I photoshopped for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see what that is then. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, mine's gonna be for people who have alcoholism. So. Okay. That'll be okay. me after this podcast. Uh, <laughs> speaking of me, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram only at Sean Soapbox. I'm rewatching Dragon Ball Z. It's very fun. I'm having a great time. I haven't watched. I'm um, actually just, I'm in the Saiyan saga just when Goku and Vegeta have started fighting. Can I ask so, you a question? Nice. Yeah. Who's your favorite Ginyu Force member? Ooh, great oh, question. Oh, uh, Zarbon. Mm, okay. I like Goldo. You would like, of course you like Goldo. <laughs> no shit. And, 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 you know, Ginyu. Can you use uh fair fair yeah. yeah um so yeah i'm having a great time with that uh watch a bridge i don't oh yeah you told me what that is um yeah i'm having a blast with dragon ball z can't wait to see dr strange the next time that we are here uh we'll all have seen it so can't wait for that see you guys on the other side no spoilers please be nice to each other With that, we're the Comics Pal signing off. Until next time, take care, guys. See you next death. (laughs) (laughs) Got me. Uh, Yeah, it's going to be me. This is the next death. Whoa. Bye, guys. (laughs) Bye.